right, we're doing executive session first. I'm going to call to order this beloved meeting of the school committee, and I'm looking for a motion to go into executive session for the purposes stated here. Negotiations of non-union personnel, uh, uh, Superintendent Bodie to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union or non-union personnel, or contract negotiations with union and or non-union in which it in held in an open meeting may be, have a detrimental effect, and to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. Collective bargaining may also be conducted. And we should have um, an attorney read so this moved. language. Moved by Mr. Hainer, second, second by Dr. Seuss. Roll call, Mr. Hainer. Aye. Mr. Aye. Pierce, Dr. Allison Ampey, Ms. Starks, yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Yes. Seuss, the chair votes in the affirmative. We are in executive session. We'll see you in about 15 minutes. Thank you. We're back. Uh, welcome. This is the meeting of the Arlington School Committee on February 11th, 2016. Um, if it is not February 11th, you're watching us on, on, on tape um, or digitally recorded. Uh, we begin by taking a quick look around us. We have sixth grade color and space paintings. Sixth graders explored a wide range of contemporary and historic artwork, both realistic and abstract, looking for different techniques that artists employ to show space in their work. We also explored color theory. They mixed con uh, contrasting or complementary cover colors and analogous or related colors, as well as different values of the same colors. And seventh grade has mixed media still lives. Uh, seventh graders were inspired by contemporary artist Daniel Gordon, who works with the idea of a still life, but in a whole new way. He creates the objects for his still life, sets up the still life to give his unreal objects the feeling of composition of traditional still life compositions. He photographs these assemblages, and the photograph becomes his final artwork. He is known for his bright, bold colors and patterns in each of his still lives. So that's the inspirational, wonderful Arlington artwork on the walls. We now proceed on to uh, public participation. We have two people. Greg Christiana is first. Uh, come up to the microphone. I'll state that we do public participation for three minutes. We generally do not we do not comment during public participation. We may uh, move things into a subcommittee or schedule things for later meetings. Uh, Mr. Christiana. Great, thank you. Um, uh, well, first, I, I wanted to recognize the uh, the efforts of the uh, the Arlington Enrollment uh, Parent Group. Uh, I've actually just recently met two of the members. I think Julie and Mariah. Um, so, hi, nice to meet you. Um, and so, I'm coming at this like, real, like entirely new to like the Arlington like political and educational structure. I don't really know anybody, mm -hmm. uh, but I do want the best for my kids mm -hmm. at Bishop, and as they go into middle school and the high school here. Um, so what I wanted, I don't know if you can respond now, but at least if we can take the discussion offline, uh, I'm just kind of struggling to find out, um, like from the school committee's point of view, um, what are the thing, like beyond what the, the, uh, the enrollment parents group is already doing, mm -hmm. um, being like, a, like an awesome, mm -hmm. huge, great advocate for, you know, the public schools, um, what else should we be doing? Uh, like from the parents' end mm -hmm. to support, like is the vision that, I, I'm not questioning mm -hmm. whether your vision is ambitious mm -hmm. enough, I'm asking you, do mm -hmm. you believe that your vision for the public schools in Arlington uh, is ambitious enough? And is there anything more, it, it, what should we be doing from the parents' side that would allow you to kind of, mm -hmm. um, kind of fulfill like what would be your druthers for, for our kids? And uh, so if you have like, any reservations about like what's like feasible or rational or whatever, um, like if you set that aside, like what like, are we doing everything that we can do? And I, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that as a slight that I think you're not. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of throw that question out there just kind of innocently and honestly. Thank you very much. Uh, we're not going to comment, but I'll just make two things that uh, feel free to contact any of us offline. Uh, I can we tell can that. Find. Dr. Seuss is chair of the Community Relations Committee, and she'd be more than happy to uh, give you the lay of the land. And secondly, I'm, just as an advertisement for everybody, uh, I think that 
town you can take out papers for town meeting for another couple of days mm -hmm. that's our legislative nope. branch can oh, no. nope. five o'clock today was over. oh five o'clock today was the yep. ah. <laughs> oh well. well i got my signature certified an hour oh ago. good <laughs> welcome to town meeting you've done you've done the big part and that which precinct are you what's that oh, what, what precinct, precinct are you 15. Uh, okay good yeah. uh that's sort of uh the the, the, the you uh, town meeting members get all the information prior to town meeting so you get stacks of stuff and uh, okay. that you can read through and, and, and figure out. But now we're having a conversation in public participation, <laughs> which I can't, so I'm going to stop talking right now. But w thank you for coming, and you, uh, please call me, call Jennifer, call all of us. We can have a conversation on the side. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Mariah Terrell. <clears throat> I first sat before all of you um, here at this table approximately one year ago. It was my first time in this room and I was asking for your attention in regards to our Thompson School fourth graders and their class sizes. Mm -hmm. Over the past year, I have played, paid closer attention to your meetings and discussions as the town-wide enrollment challenges have become the forefront and are no longer isolated to the Thompson School. Mm -hmm. I am impressed and amazed by the amount of hours that you all put in, the meetings you attend, and the paperwork you have to go through on a daily basis. Thank you for all of your hard work and dedication to our schools. However, as I find myself tuning into more of the discussions and meetings, I am surprised to find that here we are in February of 2016 and still having the same discussions, still guessing how much things may cost, and with no clear plan or goals in place. Yes, the Thompson School will have two temporary modular classrooms next year, which is critical, but it's a band-aid. It does not get the Thompson School what it needs in the long term, and it's not in line with a long-term plan. The middle school enrollment is now on the brink of being disastrous, and again, there is no clear plan in place. For a while, it has been assumed that 20 modular classrooms would sit in the parking lot at the Audison, but a couple of meetings ago, it was mentioned that they might not be able to sit there due to the airflow that needs to get to the school. Then at the facilities meeting on Tuesday night, it was mentioned that the modulars probably could not be stacked at the Audison as the site cannot accommodate that configuration. So I'm just wondering if someone from the modular company has actually looked at this space and is putting modulars at the Audison School even a viable option. When hearing discussions about how much it might cost to renovate the Gibbs School, we have heard anywhere from $14 million to $30 million. A new proposal of a permanent addition at Audison is now on the table with a labeled cost of $12 million. Does this include blasting into the hill or relocating the parking lot and dealing with traffic flow or extra gym and cafeteria space? We understand that opening up a second middle school would require difficult conversations with the current Gibbs tenants and the teachers at OMS who may or may not want to move schools. However, you held on to the Gibbs building in case of enrollment needs and we have trouble understanding why using the building has not been the forefront of these options. Every week that goes by without a decision being made or a plan proposed is another week that our teachers, staff, and students are paying the price. As more administrative solutions are put into place, the quality of the education we are providing is declining and our teachers and our staff are being asked to give up the dedicated safe space that they require and deserve. So tonight I ask you that when you talk about what to present to the task force meeting on the 23rd, please push hard for a feasibility study, mm -hmm. one that looks at all of our options, space at Thompson to accommodate the East Arlington Elementary School growth, renovating the Gibbs School and in addition to Audison. It needs to include how long each option will take and the costs that will incur for the temporary fixes during the process. If there is money in your budget, I'm not sure what is holding you up or why this has not been done, but if the money needs to come from the town, then please make the plea for the importance of getting it done now. It's now past time for hard figures and timelines in order for the process to move forward. So please continue to do what you do best and advocate for our students and teachers. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you provide a copy of your remarks to Ms. Fitzgerald? Thank you. Um, anything, anyone else for public participation? Hearing none. Next order of business is a vote to approve <coughs> Superintendent Bodie's contract. We have negotiated a contract for an additional three years for the superintendent. Um, I need a motion to authorize the chair to sign the contract on behalf of the committee. Mr. Thielman. So moved. Second by Dr. <coughs> Seuss. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Hainer. This is just authorize you to sign am i correct yeah we're, we're not the contract itself well uh, no. well yeah. we we've yes two votes. to approve okay, so it we'll do, and so we'll do the signs. two votes yeah okay so that's this authorized to sign fine okay all uh any discussion on that uh all in favor aye. aye aye opposed that's unanimous now on approving the contract itself uh motion by mr thielman second by dr seuss 
Um, I'll second by Mr. Uh, Pierce. Yeah, he looks like he wants to second this. Uh, any discussion on the contract, Mr. Heiner? No discussion. Nope, no discussion. Any, dis any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Pierce. I just wanted to say I'm very pleased to take this vote in a couple of minutes. Um, it's something that uh, I think our, our district is well served um, with your leadership, Dr. Bodie, and I'm very happy to be able to take this vote tonight. Okay, uh, any other comments? Um, hearing none, we'll do this as a roll call because this is an important one. Mr. Hainer? No. Uh, Mr. Pierce? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Ms. Starks? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Dr. Seuss? Yes. And the chair votes in the affirmative. Uh, we have a contract approved. Do you accept? I do. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will sign on behalf of the committee and... I want to say, uh, I want to say how appreciative I am of your confidence in my leadership of this district and um, I look forward to continuing our collaborative relationship. Thank you very much. Okay. Next order of business will be to approve an addendum to the contract uh, for Diane Fisk Johnson, our CFO. Uh, motion to approve by Mr. Pierce, second by uh, Ms. Starks. Any discussion? Hearing none. Hearing none, uh, we'll take a roll call on this one. Mr. Hainer? No. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Uh, Ms. Starks? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Uh, Dr. Seuss? Yes. And the chair votes in the affirmative. That's a 6-1 vote. That is approved. The following motion, Mr. Hainer? I move that the, uh, that the committee has authorized uh, the expenditures of... Uh, as presented. As presented uh, in the documents for pr principal uh, contracts, uh, addendums for the principal contracts, and uh, for specific jobs uh, as prescribed under our policies. Second. Okay. okay. Motion by Mr. Hainer, second by Ms. Starks. Any discussion on that? This will be a roll call. Mr. Hainer? Aye. Uh, Mr. Pierce? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Ms. Starks? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Uh, Dr. Seuss yes. and the chair votes in the affirmative. That is approved. Um, uh, Arlington Public Schools new website presentation. Can I invite uh, Julie Dunn to mm -hmm. come up and, and uh, show us this? As, this is a little bit of background. We have been looking to create a new website. I, the one that we have right now, while it has a lot of information, the navigation on that website is, uh, is often challenging for people. So I want to, to thank Julie Dunn, um, as well as Claudia Bertoli, who many of you have never met, but Claudia is, um, is, one, uh, is our webmaster, among other things that she does, and also Karen Tassoni, who has worked on this as well. This has taken, I don't know, what do you say, Julie, maybe six months or more of, of, a lot of a lot of hours that have been put into into this, and I and I this this has been shown to the uh, community relations subcommittee for some feedback, which actually we've made some adjustments based on that feedback, and so Julie's here tonight to to present this to everybody, um, and you can tell them about our launch date and all of that. Yes. Okay. So um, there it is. Uh, so that's the the test website which. Um, We'll go live next Thursday. I need a microphone. I do. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. We have a vast television audience worldwide on ACMI.tv. It's, it's, it's a wonderful service. Thank you. Yes, ACMI is wonderful. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Um, this is, I want, to, I want to start by saying it's not actually a new website, it's actually a facelift and a revamping of our current website. It's, so that, so I just don't want um, anyone to think this is a brand new website, it's not. It's a reworking of our existing website, updated um, for ease of use and updated for um, the look. And I hope it is going to meet with 
um, approval, but we also realize that there may be comments moving forward, and we will be very happy to you know, take them as, as it goes forward. But at this point, the, the um, IT department is planning to take it live next Thursday, the, the Thursday of, of the vacation week, so the school website will actually be down for a portion of that day, and we're also going to um, send a heads up to parents that Friday could also be a day where the website may not be available, just in case there's additional work to be done. So we'll be sending um, a communication out to the parents for, about that so that people know and can get information out of it now. So let me just um, show you some of the key changes. The first one is, as you can see, we have a banner that moves that shows photographs of all the schools. Um, most of the school's uh, photos were taken by um, Arlington High School students, um, which is really exciting for us. A couple of them um, were not, but the lion's share were taken by um, Arlington High School students. So we're really happy to have a banner showing all of our schools. We've uh, reorganized the menu. You can see we now, instead of having a long, remember in the old website we had a long banner down the, down the side with all the, all the things you would be able to see, now we've organized menus. So I'm gonna actually start with administration. You can see the drop-down box. Um, and then we've organized um, items related to administration here. We have a, a, a superintendent's welcome page, and then we have quick links for other administrative items here. For instance, let me show you facilities and enrollment. Here's a page which we've organized the Arlington High School facilities information, the Stratton Ele Elementary School renovation, um, our enrollment um, school enrollment task force, the various um, population enrollment forecasts and projections that we have. So we have a, a place for that under administration. But there's the general look of the administration drop-down box. And, um, you know, so we hope that's going to be easy for families to use. Um, then you'll see that we've um, taken, this is how you see it's not a new um, website. This is the school directory that we've had in the past, but it's been updated for the look of the website. So, um, so that's what's there. In the school committee area, um, we've split apart your members and the policy manual that was together before, but now it's, um, sorry. Oop. I don't know why that's not doing that. So we'll do that. Um, so we've got the members um, here. Oopsie. There you are. I believe there's a desire to have photographs of the school committee members, so feel free to send us photographs, and we can put them in here, headshots. Send them um, to you? Um, I, you can send them to the superintendent's office or to me, either one. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Okay. You, you have a preference for the format, JPEG enough? I think a JPEG's enough. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask Karen to send out more information about that. How's okay, that? Actually, yeah. we can send the pictures to Karen and let her do Yeah, why don't we? Well, well, let's have, yeah. uh, if she sends it to us and then we'll send, we'll reply back. We've actually that. already got a page formatted waiting for the photographs. Mm -hmm. So, oh. it's, awesome. but we're not going to do it until we get a photograph of everybody. Mm -hmm. So, um, so just so you know, we're ready to go with the photographs. Um, yes, Mr. Pierce, that includes you. <laughs> for a week and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's our school committee sec section. You can see the policy manual is now um, separate. It used to be all on one page. We think this will be a little easier for navigation of the policies separate from the um, school committee members. Um, under district, these are all items that existed in the past, but they've been re reorganized. These are topics relevant district-wide. We have submenus, so in departments, you slide, you slide over and see the various departments that we have direct links to. Um, under uh, families, we have, again, things that directly relate to families with submenus. For instance, bullying, we have our bullying incident report form and the bullying prevention plan. Here under CPAC, CPAC has their website and their brochure. Um, so this is for families. You've got um, Arlington Community Education. Where'd that go? Community Education, which slides over. You have the adult programs, high school programs, youth programs. So then under staff, these are, uh, again, links that are of use to staff. We have the bullying again um, into the portals. 
uh, power school portals. Resources, these are community resources. This is a link to the after school programs that are on, on our website. Arlington Youth Counseling Center, as you can see, community ed again, in case people go to it a different way. Um, and then a link to the town of Arlington's um, community resources. Most of these things, virtually all of them, are on our current website. They've just been reorganized, so it's just easier to find. And we think the look is a little nicer. Let me go back to the home page and just show you on quick links. Um, these can be shown open or shut. It's a nice clean look with it shut. We've got the calendar on the front page, the home page. That's There's great. highlights of news here. If people want to see news that's old, they can go into the district. There's news, again, and news archives, so nothing's lost. Um, in the quick links, again, these are things we think that people are just going to want to go to frequently. These can change over time, um, but, yeah. And for instance, we're coming up to registration. Registration's here under families. So if a family wants to register their, their student, it's right there. And it's also under district. So if somebody says, you know, because you can register district-wide, you can also think, I'm a family, I want to register. So we've tried to make it as user-friendly as we can. Um, if someone says, oh, I want to be welcomed by the superintendent, there you go, right from the home page. And if you click, click, sorry, on the picture, it always takes you back to the home page. Mm -hmm. cool. Mr. Hainer, what I'm going to suggest is going to take a lot of time and stuff, and so I'm not looking for it right away. The possibility on bullying, that the thing, to uh, also have a link to the policies that we have in the different, did it have policy? I, I didn't yeah, have a glass to see that. It's in yeah, the bullying, it's in the bullying plan. plan. Right. But it, it, in any of the other here. ones that we have policies on that show up here, a link to the policy as well, a cross reference to it. I use bullying, uh, bullying. Oh, in, to the school committee right, policy. To, yeah. School committee policy is what I'm saying, not j just the school policy. Uh, that particular one, you might have a handbook relation uh, to it, the process, uh, the mm -hmm, reporting mm -hmm. aspect. There's a lot to that particular mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. Other ones uh, with regard to uh, uh, field trips and stuff like that might just have one policy. Uh, just yeah, as well. we've got but the just, parent forms and handbooks here. Right, mm -hmm. just different. Mm -hmm. It will take some time to go through the whole policy to, to do the cross-linking and stuff like that. But sometimes we, it just helps people. They know the topic, but they don't know where to find it in the policy. So There's the, a search. Interesting. That we have a search, search function policies. on policies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always take you to the policy you want. Hmm. Not a bad thing, I don't uh, think. I, I mean, uh, it's not something that's going to happen. It, it, it's yeah. a long-term piece, it's, it, uh, and I appreciate that. I've seen it in, in, in other I think I think this is wonderful. I think you, mm -hmm. you, you and everyone else that's worked on this has done a phenomenal job. Uh, Thank you. It, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's been a group effort, and it's been... Um, Great. I'm, I'm excited. I hope, I hope you are. Um, I don't know if there's other concerns, comments, suggestions. Dr. Bowden? Julie, would you uh, show them the elementary, the, the school oh, yes. pages? Our, this is, this is this like is the a, pièce de résistance. Here I go. Yes. I, I was saving it for last, and I got so excited I forgot <laughs> it. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Um, this is, we have created new schools pages. Ooh, this nice. takes you to the school website that's not changing here's bishop's school website and but here's say the bishop website this gives you a basic description of the school mm -hmm. links to their their own school website a map you know where the school is you have all the phone numbers you have the name of the principal you have a, the report card letter overview full report card a link to the desc school profile mm -hmm. um, and we have this for all the schools. Oh, that's Ooh, awesome. Great. Oh, that's great. The most important thing you can see here, the arrow and the target, mm -hmm. this is to make sure people know this is where you're going to get all the detail on the school. You go right back to the current school website that is, you know, independently managed by each school. They still have their own look. They have their own information. They have everything the way they want it. But we also have a consistent um, heading page, if you will, with a, with a picture of the school and um, the information about that school. Like Let me show you um, the Odyssey and the high school. Here's the Odyssey. All the elementary schools have the same layout. So here's, here's the, uh, um, the Odyssey. You have the principal and the assistant principals. 
um, and then all the other information. Same, you have a little bit more information because it's, you know, the bigger schools are a little bit more complicated structurally. Um, and then we are going to go to the high school. So here's the high school. So it's a quick reference. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like it. That's it's great. a quick reference. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Seuss. Uh, three questions. They're not long, though. Um, this looks great. I'm really excited. Um, one question. Is the school improvement plans referenced here? Can parents get or people get to that for each yeah. of the schools? They're, they should be on every school's they website. They should be on each school's website. They're not on. We didn't put it on this page. I know they're inconsistently on the websites. It might be nice to have put it on here just to. But. We can double check to make sure that something's uh, because. <coughs> Actually, the beginning of the year, uh, Julie, in combination and collaboration with a lot of us, we created a list of things that needed to be on right. each so school. Right, so maybe better at this point. I, I think so. We've okay. double-checked okay. them. Um, then just two more questions. Um, I'm a big believer of the wisdom of the crowds, as you know. Um, is there a way for people to get back to you about uh, insights or feedback that they have um, when they're looking at the website in a couple weeks? So suppose somebody says, you know, there's just something we didn't think about that should be on there and just no one had thought about it. It's a great idea. Is there a way for people to give you that feedback? Well, I don't know if we hadn't thought of putting a, a separate structure in place, but I believe the notice that will go out tomorrow saying that the website's going to be down because it's going to be getting a new look, we can add a, a phrase there, please, re, you know, re, respond to APS superintendent at arlington.k12. I don't know you if that's... Anything, yeah. Appropriate, I, Kathy, I, or? I think, I mean, it might be small, but you might find something that's useful mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. um, then last question, sorry, to, um, is uh, the, the dashboard, which I know is on our goal. That's further down the road. We okay. think that will come under administration. Okay, so are we thinking that we can or get district. it finished? Uh, what? I said or district. Or district, right, or district. Do we think it's in we process. We don't have a, a date yet that it will be done by. We hadn't, you know, right. we've really been on focusing this on this. Goal, it's been so. going on on a parallel track. So I, Okay, yeah. so some possibility that June, but we're not sure. Mm -hmm. the, so. the, the dashboard is really going to end up, I, we think, as a continuous document, mm -hmm. a document. It's not going to be an interactive mm -hmm. document, as you might see in a content managed uh, so website. like a one-year snapshot. Well, some much. will be historic. Some, some will be, will be yeah. Some will be one year, but it, yeah. But we're we're still working on developing the various okay. views and slides of it and mm -hmm. finalize that. Um, uh, Dr. Right. Allison Amber. Okay. There's a part on the current website that's called Creating Safe Schools, and yep. it has. How do you get to that from this there it is. one? Right there. Right, but I didn't see what the. Right there. I was creating here. Creating safe schools. It's so, creating safe okay, schools. Okay, I can't read that. Big. It, it's big yeah. So, did, so big red on, box. On that okay. Yeah. It's I just also can't read here that. under district. Okay. So you the, get there two ways. Okay. My question is that that section, the creating safe schools, actually has information that would be helpful for parents about bullying and stuff. Mm -hmm. And can we get? Going to add things? that to the bullying? Yes, we yeah. can do that. Yeah, or, or get into the, the part where it talks about bullying. It, um, we mean here. And on add the safe schools, this. yes. Yes, you yes. can add the drop so down menu. Yeah, there's no reason the right. not to add that okay. there also. Yeah, right. another way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it's helpful information, but it's really hard to find on the current website. Okay. Um, and where's budget? Budget is in several places. It's under school committee. And they all go to the same thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And that's, as you see, the, the same layout of the page, but just right. with the new banner. Okay. Yeah, it's Great. also under administration, budget information. So some people might think of it as administration. Some people might think of the school committee. Okay. And then the one last thing is I, I understand that there's a couple different places people can find the registration information. Yeah. But I'm a little worried that the comments I've seen from people that I don't know and stuff, it can be hard for them to find information when, and they're really, they start looking for it early about how to register their kindergartner stuff. And I'm just wondering if, 
I, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't read everything really well. I'm wondering how easy it's going to be for them to find. Well, I if think I, I, I'm not yeah. working on the oh, is registration it in now, yeah. but I'm thinking when the new, um, when, when it's really open for kindergarten registration, we'll probably put it in, in, the, okay. in the quick links, at least, you know, for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I've been discussing right. recently. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm and thinking it may families. actually be something we'd want to have all the time. The, you know, before it's live, you just say, it'll, you know, there'll be information here in March or something, you know, registration. Will okay. Take, do you think about see that. what I'm saying? Or just, yes. if you're mid-year, Mm -hmm. you, you need the registration information Right, people now. register all yeah, year. True. What if you're true. showing up late? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay, That's all. thank you. Mr. Hainer. Uh, I can't see that far. Is the handbook in each one of the school, the student handbook in each one of the school pages? It's the, the elementary handbook is under um, families. Okay. I'd and like it's on the schools. It's the elementary handbook is not linked directly there also no, I'd, not at this present I'd like time. I'd like to recommend that I think it's great under the families but also have it in each one of the schools and I know you, there's a different one for the middle schools and a different one for the high school so yeah. I think it should be on our, our page and on the uh, as a link we for the specific that. handbooks just suggest the other thing Kathy this goes back to concern I've had a long time we now are directly and we have been directly linking to the independent web pages of the school. Mm -hmm. Are they, are we, are we going to continue to monitor them to mm -hmm. make sure that they're within the, the all the legal we parameters? We always have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Seeing no other uh, comments, uh, I just want to say this: this is really uh, a good-looking uh, website, and I'm looking yep. forward to it good. going live. I'm sure that uh, folks in the town will love it. Thank you very Hope much. So, you're welcome. Um, thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you for all your efforts. Uh, unfortunately, Ms. Scheffler is ill today. There's a virus going around. She seems to have uh, gone out to catch it. Um, so we're going to reschedule her for the next meeting. But she asked me to pass along this information, <coughs> just regarding the Minuteman Technical Institute, the current yearly operating cost. About $4 million is going down to $3.3 million and will be lower after the regional agreement is approved. Uh, the cost of proposed new building to Arlington, about a third of the actual reimbursement rate of the $144 million. Uh, I assume that she's saying that it's the, uh, a third of the re remainder after the, the reimbursement rate and won't be changed regardless of the regional agreement, unfortunately. Um, Eight towns have approved revised regional agreements so far. The remainder are scheduled to vote prior to March 1st, and the MSBA Module 5 will be there soon. Uh, requires all 16 towns to approve bonding by 523, so if the regional agreement fails in even one town, Minuteman will go immediately to a district-wide vote under um, 16N, and that's, that's the message. I'm not going to entertain questions on that. We can question her uh, in two weeks. Um, uh, fiscal 17 superintendent's proposed budget, uh, Dr. Bodie. Could we uh, uh, perhaps go forward on the agenda? We'll do the uh, park Ms. Johnson, first. that yeah. might be helpful. Ms. Johnson is at the Capital Planning Committee, mm -hmm. and I think that if there's questions, it would be important sure. that she's here for this. Okay, 8 10 p.m. Uh, we're really rocking and rolling. Park on paper versus computer in, uh, in our hold harmless. Uh, this is in response to questions from members, so this is an update. Uh, going to let Dr. Chesson respond. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some of the questions uh, came up as a result of an article that um, appeared in Ed Week and was reprinted by um, a number of um, blogs and a number of newspapers. Um, that um, park scores were lower for students who took exams on computers as opposed to those who took them on paper. Um, if one looks at the article carefully, um, y you'll see that there's many statements that not only was that varied within a state, but also within a district. Um, so while um, they are still looking at that, and um, the director of the park program um, says that they're still looking at the data. Um, there was um, very 
uneven data from uh, state to state and also from school to school. Um, there are some things that they've looked at that indicate that it's possible that the socioeconomic climate or the familiarity with um, technology or you know, the academic nature of the district um, might have come into play and there's just so many variables at this point that they cannot know. Um, one thing I also want to point out is that they're looking at basically one year's worth of data um, and really for statistical analysis that's not sufficient enough data to draw any meaningful conclusion. Um, however, in the article it does mention several um, states that have had uh, years worth of online <laughs> testing data and in those longitudinal studies they have found um, minor differences, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower, but not statistically significant. Uh, NAEP, which is a national test um, that students take, actually found that in some cases students did better um, on the test that was online. Their NAEP is getting ready to go online. And also the access test, which we give our students who are English language learners. Um, uh, this was the last year that you had a paper and pencil option. Next year it will all be online. So there's much more to come in the future. Um, we are uh, going to prepare our students, whether they're taking paper or pencil, um, or online in order to be prepared for the test. And I think one of the key things to call into mind is that um, we are in a situation where we are quote unquote hold, held harmless. Not only is the district held harmless, which means that if the district was a level two the district this year, which it was, um, that it cannot be lower than a level two for the next two years, nor can a school go below. And if they actually show an increase, they can be um, receive a higher level. And um, that also goes for uh, our teachers. We feel like our teachers are being held harmless. And also our students, because there are some points, um, while we use, still use that information to identify those students that might need um, additional assistance, um, there will be no student that would be negatively impacted if they should not do well on this test. Mm -hmm. So while it is something, you know, we feel like we need to watch, keep an eye on, um, we don't feel it's anything to be concerned about at this point. Cool. Any questions? So, Mr. Hainer. Uh, currently, um, do we have the ability to do regular testing, day-to-day, uh, week-to-week -to -week testing on, as, on the computer? Where I'm going, coming from on this is the, one of the statements in the study and several other studies on this say it, the, the, the regular use of a computer for this type of activity. And what I'm suggesting is if, if we know ahead of time, and I'm sure we, to some degree, which schools, which grades are going to be using the computers, to start doing this so that the, uh, the regular usage uh, for testing is through a computer, a similar uh, media, that should eliminate that, that issue. And, and provide uh, similarities? Uh, certainly all the students at Bishop and Audison, which are the two schools that will be taking the test online, will be doing a practice test online, and they will also be ut utilizing those tools that are given in online tests. I guess what I'm suggesting is regular testing, if you got math or something like that, instead of using any paper or pencil on your regular testing, and I know it's a burden to do this uh, for the teachers, but start using a computer media to do regular testing so it becomes a, a normal procedure for testing and eliminating the, that variability. If you do it in isolation just for one test, it can be. Sure. It, the, I want to control that variable. Absolutely. That's I, and that's a suggestion going forward. Every other test or every third or fourth test to do it on a computer to develop that Comfort, comfort factor with the students. Uh, we actually already do that at Audison. The, um, in the engineering program, the tech engineering program, they use what's called Jognog, which is a, um, it's not so much of a test as it's an online test simulation for the MCAS. They've been using that for three or four years now. Um, they actually have gotten recognition for a very creative use of that. Um, in addition, um, a lot of our uh, faculty members will use Google Forms which is a way to do a little quiz online. Um, we also use uh, a number of other software tools where teachers will do, give a formative assessment quiz. So that's something we already have in place, but I certainly will um, also talk, talk to the two um, instructional technology folks right. to have them work as much with the teachers to give students as much exposure to that kind of. And the, to thing. me, that would eliminate the, the issue of uh, a new thing mm -hmm. and causing the, uh, bring down that anxiety level using a new tool. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Dr. Allison Abbey. 
Um, my concerns with the park versus on paper versus computer wasn't just based on the education article, but Ed Week article, but also reports from other districts in Massachusetts. My recollection is Worcester and I think Newton um, had also done A-B testing and saw differences with computer significantly lower. Um, and I'm not, I think it's something that we want to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And it also, to me, suggests well, first, it sounds like they're, if these differences are real, and I understand what you're saying about statistical significance and stuff, but um, assuming that they're real, for some reason they're not dialing the tests equally, um, it is a reason to try and get everyone into the type of testing that we will be doing going forward, assume, especially assuming it's computer-based during the hold harmless section. So I would think that this would push us a little harder to try and get to all electronic testing before the end of the hold harmless so that then we've got our baseline, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, and then we just go forward. Point. Yeah, so. That's an excellent point. And we, this year we wanted to give faculty as much input as possible as to whether their, their school did on um, paper and pencil or online. And so the two schools that are doing it are those that where the you know, majority of the faculty felt comfortable doing that. Um, but it's our hope that if we, you know, we can demonstrate a lot of people's anxiety was about, you know, making sure that technology was going to work. And if we can demonstrate that, I think we'll have people a lot more comfortable because our teachers are very comfortable using technology on a day to day basis. I think that they just want to make sure that in a testing environment that the system is stable. And, sure. you know, and some folks are a little cautious, and I think mm -hmm. that that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Um, I just want to say I was at uh, Bishop last night where Dr. Chesson and uh, Linda Hansen presented um, information to the Bishop community about the test and I thought it went really well and I thought the presentation was great and I thought you answered lots of people's questions and um, I wanted to remind people that there is another presentation um, at Thompson on Wednesday the 24th. It's at 7 to 9.30 I have. Right. Um, and it's just important for anyone who has concerns or questions, come to the presentation or reach out to you separately and, um, and just sort of get everything aired and talked about. Right, that presentation will be for all elementary level yes, students. Right. Mm -hmm. And then on March 8th, there'll be a presentation at Audison sponsored by Audison's OPAC to provide information to the middle school parents. Uh, speaking uh, of uh, Thompson School, I failed to mention the meeting. The meeting, Ms. Foley is with us as our AEA rep. Uh, welcome tonight, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Um, Dr. Chesson. I, I think Dr. Bode, you want Dr. to Dr. Bode. Oh, I just, on the 24th, the, the presentation is also about the Massachusetts Common Core State right. Standards. Right. Mm -hmm. And we will have our Director of Math, Matt Coleman, mm -hmm. and our literacy coaches in the elementary, mm -hmm. as well as, I believe, our Director of EL, ELA, too. Yes. Yes. So, um, Deb Perry and um, we'll have um, Linda Hansen and um, is Tammy, Tammy McBride. Tammy's going to come. When is the one on the 8th? Is it morning or evening? It's going to be in the evening. evening. They're going to sponsor Seven. an evening meeting. Okay, yeah. Great. Any other comments or questions on this? Mm, hearing none. Um, hmm. Superintendent's report. All right. Um, well, I think the first thing I just want to talk about is snow, <laughs> snow <laughs> days. Uh, I, I've had. Uh, some feedback from parents, and, and I think that it's good to hear uh, what they have to say. The, the, the storms that are the most difficult to make a decision about are these storms that start really at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning and go through the school day. They're just so difficult because the information that you have the night before, and for that matter, even at 5 in the morning, which is when our decision needs to be made, and we need to make, I need to make that decision for a number of reasons. One is our Medco buses. I need to notify, um, notify them if we're not going to be in session. Um, also, we have, a, we have a fair number of teachers who travel great distances from New Hampshire, from the Connecticut border. So some people that drive an hour and a half in good weather. So they need to know, uh, certainly no later than 5.30, even earlier, that we don't have school. So I think it's important people know that and why the timing of these decisions 
uh, particularly the one on Monday. Uh, that, that as the, we went through that day on Monday, the storm changed course, didn't start as fast, and we didn't get as much snow. The one on Friday actually sort of exceeded their expectations in terms of how difficult the travel was going to be. So they have a, a tough time with that as well, and of course, um, superintendents also have a tough time. And I just want people to understand that really take this very seriously and spend agonizing hours about this, because I do know that it affects people very much. And uh, for people who are working, they have to um, find childcare or stay home themselves, and that can be a burden for them as well. So to the extent that when we can make, the, I can make the decision in the evening, I will do that. Uh, but if there is some uncertainty about the forecast, I'm going to wait to the morning, and <clears throat> at, five, at 5 or very shortly after 5, you'll find it on all of the media, our website. Um, but I, and I'll call, I've had to delay the calls because they're linked at the moment. Mm -hmm. Most parents don't want to call much before 6. <laughs> so. As long as teachers staff, would like as long it a little as staff gets the call at five. Why? Yeah, so teachers will probably have to check their their email as well. So um, maybe we can unlink these going forward, so we can just do different timings on it. But um, th and the thing that I also want to say, and I need to say every year and probably multiple times, is that I'm probably going to make decisions. Hopefully not that uh, families might think. It's too dangerous for their child to be out or it's too dangerous for them to be out and that is a decision that is their decision to make and all they need to do is to call in their child and explain the reason and that will be an excused absence it will be an absence but it will be an excused absence on our end we probably can run our buses if we get four inches of snow much beyond that is is very tricky uh, particularly with the hills in Arlington and also some of our buses go long distances so that is sort of a, a cutting number if you're listening to the weather in which we pay a lot of attention you start going five six inches with uncertainty at the you know at the end of the day got to go with safety what that does though to us right now is that our, our 180th day is the Friday of the third week. So I'm hoping that uh, the, um, the weather gods are with us and we don't have any more Good. snow in, in February and March. Once we hit April 1, even if it snows, we're fine <laughs> in terms of uh, extra days. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, yeah, Dr. Okay. Allison Ampey. Um, this, the day that the high school was dismissed early because of the bomb threat, did that count as a snow day or it's just it was considered a, a day of school? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 the snow day thing is such a, a difficult thing to do. Uh, just, uh, and I don't like to second guess superintendents because you know, it, it's, it's difficult. But I thought that both calls were right on and the logic behind it was yeah. fine. Uh, Mr. Pierce. Yeah, I mean, getting the call during the Super Bowl was perhaps the best present you could give. <laughs> the I got a few comments in. like the that. The commercials were awful. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Super Bowl were, you know, that was oh. the best possible time. <laughs> it was timed that way. <laughs> I roll on these little test, text sure. message thingies. Uh, I have to tell you a very funny story. And I won't, one of the teachers, I was visiting one of our schools the other day, and um, so I would go into the classroom and you know, introduced, we, we talk a, f a couple minutes, and so I left, and the teacher was explaining to the person what my job was in blank faces. This, you know, these are little uh, <laughs> young, young children. But then she said, well, she's the person that calls snow days. She, and so one little boy chirped, I love that person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so that's cute, beautiful. so cute. <laughs> All right. Um, Self-interest there. Anyway, uh, I would like to ask, uh, I have a couple more things, but I'd like Allison uh, Elmer to t tell you a little bit about a course that we're offering here, which um, really speaks to our goal about improving the social-emotional um, climates and cultures of, our, of our, our schools. Sure. So we're partnering with Leslie University um, to offer, it will ultimately be a series of four graduate courses. Um, covering 
um, helping traumatized children learn so that ultimately, um, you know, we would be able to say we have trauma-informed practices. Um, the course developed out of the legislation, if you remember the Safe and Supportive Schools Act, which ultimately got released under one of the gun bills um, later on. Um, but Leslie worked with the um, Ed Law Project out of Harvard, as well as Mass Advocates for Children to create this course. Um, some people might be familiar with the Purple Book, which is kind of the handbook on um, how to work with um, trauma-informed practices. So we've started the first of the four courses um, last two Fridays ago. Tomorrow we'll have another class. We have 25 <coughs> participants um, from pre-K to um, the high school. Um, it was open to all faculty. So we have uh, TAs, we have specialists, we have gen ed teachers, we have guidance counselors, social workers, school psychologists who all signed up for the course. Um, the courses are intended to be taken <coughs> as a series so that at the end people would receive a certificate of um, completion that would you know, result in saying your trauma-informed practices. Um, but we're hoping to be able to offer, offer several iterations of this as we go forward, but we had the first cohort started and the feedback from the first class was great. It's a mixture of on-site and online learning. Um, so they'll get three graduate credits for each course. Um, and Leslie has uh, an incredible grant, which is allowing um, participants to take the class for $500 for three graduate credits. So, wow, that's awesome. Um, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. That's so phenomenal. we're really excited about this and looking forward to continuing the rollout. Excellent. A little bit off subject, but um, I've been reading with interest some of what they've been discussing down on the Cape, um, uh, specifically with um, stress for, for youngsters and, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing things like meditation in the classroom, developing <coughs> that as sort of a, a, a practice. Mm -hmm. um, what are the, what's the district's thoughts on, on em, employing such a strategy? And uh, I, would, I would welcome that. As it's something. actually, we have it going on in several pockets already. Um, Dr. Chesson and I met with the folks at AEF to look at a um, development and exploration grant to expand some of that work because they were noticing the number of um, grant applications they were receiving across the district around things like yoga in the classroom, mindfulness, exercise desk, things of that nature, you know, that are addressing some of these issues. So we are going to be applying for one of the AEF grants to um, develop and explore um, a behavioral health group that will look at how to implement these practices across the district. We, we have a, a, a lot of practices going on in the district, but we're trying to get a, a, some better coordination um, and also looking at you know what is really effective. In fact, I was in a class today, and the teacher was doing um, this is an online program where the kids could move to it. It wasn't a dancing, but it was actually moving to it, just to get them to have a movement break to just settle. So I mean, it's a, so there, a lot of teachers are doing this. People have experimented with lighting in their classrooms. So there is quite a bit that actually is going it on It ranges right from, now. you know, smaller initiatives, like things like that, to apps about breathing and whatnot, to larger school-wide, um, a couple of our schools have adopted responsive classrooms. So that's a building-wide um, uh, culture that they develop and build. And we're expanding that training. Um, through mm -hmm. um, more grant money. So it's, it's and like, as Dr. Bodie said, it's something that we want to try and bring some, you know, cohesion to so that we're rolling it out effectively. I, I don't know how this relates. At the uh, PTO meeting the other night, one of the parents uh, demonstrated, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, a hook, a hook stool. Uh, oh, yes. And uh, I, I looked at that and I said, my gosh, I wish I had had a couple of those for my class. The base is, mm -hmm. Circular, mm -hmm. and it allows the person sitting in it to not a lot of range, but just enough motion to dissipate a lot of nervous energy. And, and some of us, me included, could probably use it. And I, I went online. They come in all sizes. They do, we, and yeah. actually, I believe some of the AEF grants in the past have been requests for those kind of purchases. Uh, the uh, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the parents was sitting in it, and they were by the end of the night they were fighting over it. They all wanted to sit There's a reason why we like these swivel chairs, yeah, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, but Same idea. this gives you three, yeah. th three degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Dr. Seuss. Uh, 
I, I have a big question, and it's probably premature to answer this. <laughs> um, I know that each school has a slightly different social and emotional approach. Sure. So some do responsive classrooms, and others do uh, positive reinforcement, and mm -hmm. then open circle. And mm -hmm. um, really do we think in a few years that we're going to um, have sort of an across the board approach, or do we think that we value sort of the different approaches that different schools are doing? Well, I think that it is a little premature. We value what the schools are doing, yeah. and uh, and, it, and, it, and it, it's certainly on the consciousness of every principal and and school in our district. Mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to do is get coordination, provide resources. Um, whether we, I, I don't think it's a particularly good idea to say we want you to be a responsive classroom school. I think that's something that becomes it's more organic and it develops and and we can provide the resources for that. But what we do want to make sure is that we have effective practices <coughs> in all of our schools in all of our classrooms, and um, it's, it's it's something that we are very conscious of and taking very seriously. And I think the work that we are hoping to do through the development and expansion grant would be looking at some of that. What are effective practices? What are ex practices we want to extend to other schools? And as Dr. Bodie said, you know, whether or not it's PBIS or mm -hmm. responsive class, do you have a school wide system for recognizing values, behaviors you want to see, reinforcing them when, you know, and then having that school voice be, uh, the school voice has to be a large part of it, but it also has to include, I think, community stakeholders as well. So um, it is it is a long timeline, but it's, yes. yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the update. Uh, Dr. Allison Abbey. I just wanted to add my voice to Mr. Pierce that I also looked into the the program that they're trying to get rid of in Dennis Yarmouth and th was impressed, very impressed, and, and would suggest that it's something that we should look into as to have as part of the repertoire that the schools can choose from or at least to consider it. Mm -hmm. One of the things we feel very fortunate about is that um, when Allison was in Reading prior to coming here, she was actually the person that began the programs they have there that was on the front page of the Globe. Mm -hmm. So there's been, she has a lot of experience with this and, uh, and uh, actually a, a number of our um, coordinators are working together it's, it's really going to be a whole district effort as we move forward but I think if we can uh, secure some funding for this it would be it would make make this go faster mm -hmm. okay. um, just a couple of other things and then we can get to the budget since I'm in mm -hmm. in this um, one is very exciting is that our um, high school robotics club participated in the regional U.S. First meet last week, and there were 17 teams, and at the end of the, uh, the, the contest, competition, Harlington High School ranked number three. So this was a, this was a, uh, a big jump in terms of um, their performance from last year, and I want, really want to acknowledge the team who worked very hard, and the two advisors are Ted Fuse and JCG. So it was terrific. The other uh, piece of good news from the high school is that um, the uh, Arlington High School mock trial team finished the preliminary round and advances to the regional round, uh, which will be take which will take place um, sometime in Mar March March six, and so <coughs> there were so this was the the fourth year we participated in it, and the high school will be one of 32 teams in the regional competition. Yeah. So, and beginning the competition, 130, 130 schools had uh, been involved. So this is a tr another great accomplishment, and uh, congratulations to Joe Sansonito and his team. Mr. Hainer. Uh, uh, Dr. Bodie, are those uh, open to the public? I've, I don't know the answer to that. I could find out. There's a couple of members that might, would like to go and cheer. For the mock trial? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the robotics? <laughs> no, well, it's hard to cheer robots. Yeah. Well, that sounds fine. I, Marco Rubio was attempting. Don't go there. <laughs> All okay. right. So do you want to go into budget? Budget. Back to the budget. Can you open it up? I All right. Now, well, now Ms. Johnson's back from capital planning. Mm -hmm. 
And I want to thank her and, and Julie Dunn is here to, tonight also um, for their help in putting this, this presentation together. Um, it's trying to make this very, synthesize all of the work that has gone on over the last um, few months, really. So as we've looked at the proposed budget, so for people who are listening, right now this is a superintendent's proposed budget, which has had a lot of input from teachers, from administrators, from the school committee and the budget subcommittee. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of input into this. And at this, we will be, we will be talking about it, but at, a, at the me first meeting in March, the school committee will vote on this budget and will then become the school committee's budget, which will then be presented at the finance committee about a week later. So we had uh, several budget priorities for uh, the development of this budget. And the first, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to do it. You want me to do it? Yeah, that would be great. Hmm, if it works. Is it up? I think it's up. Isn't it up? Yeah, I'm trying. It, I'm hitting up, and it's not going. It's not. No, working. I meant uh, up, at the, up at the uh, the, the, the uh, oh, camera. I'm sorry. No, I think it's no. It's into my laptop. That's what I thought it yeah. was. The, the control. Here, I'll just sit here. <laughs> okay. Hit the arrow. Now that we've proved it's done, can you put us back in the dark? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. That one. <clears throat> the, the first priority is the retention and compensation of faculty and staff. Um, FY17 uh, budget will be the second year of the new contracts. And uh, so the budget will fund those con contracted, those contracts, as well as an additional 2% for staff outside the collective bargaining. And this evening, tonight, I thank the committee for approving that for principals. A second priority was enrollment growth and class size mitigation. And in this area, one of the high priorities was the Audison half cluster. And for people who don't understand what that means, is that we're going to have um, two teachers that will have 50 or 60 students, a, a regular cluster is probably around 120 students in which they have four core teachers. So the two teachers that will uh, be teaching will have be duly certified in math and science and then English and social studies. We are going to need uh, probably four elementary teachers. Um, two right now are in the budget for Thompson. We have an approval to move forward from town meeting with two modular classrooms. We know of the two reserves that one for sure is going to be needed at Hardy already, and very likely another one will be needed at Hardy. So I'm, we're anticipating this probably going to be four elementary. We also are going to have uh, more instruction, more teachers for Arlington High School mathematics. The third priority is the support for our high need students. Um, one of our district goals is to close the achievement gap. And every year we've made a lot of progress in this area. And in order to do that, it requires support. And so we're going to be funding elementary learning specialists, two. We had originally thought that we would, have, we would ask for four. But when we began this process, we had, which I'll, uh, we'll go over in a couple minutes, we thought that we would, the, the, the list of asks that we wanted to have for next year, guided by these priorities, was about 3.8 million. What we're going to be able to fund is about 1.5. So that's one of the reasons why this, this will be reduced. We're also are going to have some additional math coaching at the elementary level and interventions. <coughs> With the growing population at the middle school, we'll need a nurse and, another, and a, and a part-time social worker. And then we need, again, to support our high needs students at the high school co-taught math course. And the fourth priority was essential curriculum materials and unfunded mandates. The Common Core, the implementation of the Common Core Math State Standards is required and will continue to require a lot of professional development, 
uh, for our teachers. We have done a lot of work over the last few summers uh, and will continue to do that in aligning our curriculum to those to those standards and also creating our own assessments and uh, and analyzing those assessments. We also have been shortchanging for a number of years now um, K-8 curriculum materials and we've sort of reached a point where we can no longer <coughs> do that and so we're going to be looking um, to expand materials at our ele an elementary level in math, science, reading, and writing. And some of these materials will be targeted at different grade levels, and some several grade levels. We need more. We, we need more materials in it for health education. Our, sec, our social studies books at the secondary level are so out of date, it's um, embarrassing, and those need to be replaced. And they will also involve digital copies with just a classroom set. There will be art materials that are needed to be ordered as well. So it's a full range of uh, cr not only curricular areas, but also levels. So these are the budget priorities. We're going on to the next slide. Our total appropriation, our total budget for FY16 was um, 59.4 59 million dollars. Um, if we are, and of that, our town appropriation was the, the majority of that money at 53.5 50, at million with grants at 2.4 and revolving, and revolving account fees and so forth um, at 3.3. That, that was FY16. As we look to the anticipated revenues for the FY17 budget, we will, our revenues will be about $62.6 .6 million. Again, which the majority of the funding for this comes from town appropriation at $57 million. And grants are, going to, are expected to go down somewhat this year, particularly Title I, and uh, as well as um, our fees. So the total increase when you combine all of our revenue sources is about 5.4%, which is a different percent than actually what the increase is in the town appropriation, which is 6.4. So, but the, the net revenue increase is that. And as a footnote on all these slides, one of the things that those that are, those that are listening tonight and those that want to do more, more um, explore, exploration with our budget it is, on, it is on our website and can be accessed under budgets on the left-hand side. And, and as we go into the new website, there'll be a little bit easier access to it. All right, so the proposed budget changes. Um, so we have a net increase of, of $3.2 uh, million for next year, of which if we, just, if we just address salary increases, that will be $1.7 million, which leaves us about 1.5 to address um, enrollment, other enrollment growth um, hires as well as um, needs of the district. So approximately $2.4 million is not going to be funded with the revenue that we have. Now, what is included here, and you won't be able to see this at all, in terms of in terms of the actual numbers, but I think you can see it in terms of the color coded. The uh, the brighter green is what is being funded in full. But in full. In full. In full. Yes, funded in full. Exactly. When you go to the darker green, that is partially funded, and then the, the unfunded is the brown. All right, so you get a sense of that, and you can go through, could you just um, go, go through, through the a next couple page? pages? You can yeah. sort of see a visual with how, what that looks like. These, this document, this PowerPoint, will be on the website tomorrow. So anyone who wants to take a better look at all of this or will, will be able to do that. All right, if we move on to, this is a very familiar circle that we've seen in the past. And it, it shows graphically 
where the sources of revenue are for the school department budget. And again, you can see that the part that's sort of the dark, the, the darker green, I would say, the yellow. darker green, yellow, uh, yellow yeah. green, <coughs> is the town appropriation. And the grants, which is the almost brown, is a, a much smaller sliver. And in fact, that's different than it has been in past years. And then our revolving fees. So that just gives you a, a, good, a good visual on that. And in, in the next circle diagram, it takes um, all of the major budget categories, uh, bu budget expenses by each magic major category, and shows how that relates. Again, one of the things that you can see is that the, the two largest wedges here are instruction for re regular education, which is the green, and then instruction for special education, which is the sort of the light purple, lavender purple. Right. Moving on. Now this, this diagram here, I think, is very illustrative in, in really showing what's happened, where we have put the money over the last few years that we have in the way of increases from fiscal year to the next fiscal year. And the first set of bar graphs, which maybe you can't see, is elementary. The second set is secondary and then special education. What you can see is that the money that has been, revenue for the money, the revenue has all gone to instruction to the classrooms. What you see here is that curriculum instruction materials and, and, and relation related to that, which probably includes um, some of our professional development, is fairly flat. Our administrative costs, again, are really relatively flat. And then other items that would be lumped under facilities or transportation, again, remaining pretty flat. So one thing um, I, I also want to point out is how we define special education. And I give a lot of credit to Diane Johnson in, in, in creating a consistency across many years of, so we can compare special education costs from year to year and defining very specifically what are our special education costs. And these include our grant funded costs our special education grant funded costs. Legal and transportation costs which directly support special education students. That's it. We also have interventions. And our definitions of, invent, uh, of interventions in Arlington includes all of our support in math and literacy, RTI, our ELL programs, academic challenge and enrichment guidance, and all of these interventions support both regular education students, general education students, and special education students. Now, why do you, why are they both necessary? Well, with special education are legally mandated costs for eligible students. Whereas interventions reach really all students who struggle and students who might necessarily not be eligible for special education services. If we go to the next diagram here, um, this is looking at um, our costs over several fiscal years in terms of you go from FY13 actuals to 14 to 15, then we have FY16 projected and FY17 proposals. So what, what, did we, what can we take away from this, this information? that um, one, we're seeing an, an increase here in the, the money, again, the going, going directly to our, our classrooms. We also see that there is some growth in the interventions. I think you can see it, it's the, the red there um, are the is the, is the intervention. So there's a slight increase over these different years for that. Um, the, so the green is the general ed, I'm pretty sure that's the one. Yes. Yeah. yes. And then the yellow 
is special education. So again, like the bar graphs we saw before, the <coughs> increase is going into those programs. What we also see <coughs> is that administration is fairly flat, again, over all of these years. And if you can barely even see it on this graph, is there a color there? I can't see it's it. It's blue. It's blue. sort of blue. a blue. It's, it's very it's very small. That's professional development. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can sort of see oh. it right there. So we pointed out on there we can you can yeah, use that's, your laser, yeah. yeah. It's it's in between. So there's been some talk, well can't we just reduce special education or uh, professional development costs to fund other things? And there's really we're do there <clears throat> we really cannot. Um, but, that, but I do want to say this, and, and it might give the impression that we are not providing professional development for our teachers. And that's really not the case at all. In fact, the research has shown, and in fact, I think there's no question about this, that probably the most effective uh, professional development you can give teachers is having them work together, visit each other in their classrooms. And we have, in fact, in one school, we have a team of teachers, and they go and they, they watch another teacher teach. We doing a lot of videotaping. All of these are very uh, significant and powerful professional development. These costs really reflect the the work that we might do in the the summertime in terms of stipends and uh, and stipends to teachers to to um, do workshops, which they do in the summer. So again, the, this graph here sort of reflects the same thing we saw on the other graph as to where the money is going and what our priorities are. So if you want to have more information about the budget, and I, I think Dr. Ampey wants to talk a little bit about the different ways that people can participate in this process going forward until the vote of the school committee, you can find the budget on the district website and um, all of the details. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, give me a sec. I didn't okay. realize I was going to be up. Maybe you uh, can ask Mr. questions. Mr. Hainer. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. It's very clear and easy to follow. Thank you and everyone that put it together. Quick uh, question on the revolving accounts. Um, w why are you anticipating an increase? It. Uh, oh, I'll explain. Um, one of the things that we discussed in terms of meeting our essential our essential um, ads to this coming budget for 17 was to take $250,000 out of reserves. So that's the $250,000 coming in from our reserve balances is flowing in through that category. That's what, why the... If you the, look uh, at um, section, section three in your budget book, um, you can see it when right. you... It's I'm, I'm just looking back at this. It, it, showed, it, it showed an increase and you, you've answered it. Thank you. The other question, uh, under the budget priorities, you mentioned uh, the high need students. In, especially in math, on the graphs of, of the cuts and things uh, that you're proposing, the high needs is still in there for the, uh, on math for the elementary, but not for the high school. And I, I would ask you to look again. No, uh, we have a COTA program in math at the high, high school. school. Mm -hmm. Right, but the, the high needs math is, uh, I'm on page 104 of the, uh, the, the colored pages. It's three or four where you see the high school. That's the special ed department section. No. So if you go two more pages down, you'll see that the two in green at the top are the, the co-taught math courses at the high school. Okay, but the, the high needs part is, is how we're judged on our... Uh, but these are directly targeted at high needs students. Yeah. Even though they're not in special ed, they can be high needs and not special ed. That's why they're under the high school and not under special ed. Okay. They are under special that. ed. Yeah, we, they're, they're, I think, they're right I think, here. Uh, Alice, it, it, I it says right it. here, high, high needs math, high school, on the first page. Right. Right. There was there was a hope that we would 13. be able to. Right. There was a hope that we would have a sick more. more high needs math. Some of the FTEs fall under special education. Right. Some of the FTEs fall under regular education, and so we've. Funded the ones that you folks have done a phenomenal job with with all the restraints, and I appreciate that. All I'm asking is that if you could take another look, put that one back. That's my Just, push. Yeah. That's yes. all. Thank you, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, first, I just want to follow up on that on that same item, 11 lines 11, 12, and 13. 
the F the original FTA, I think it's meant to be 0 0.2. It's clear in the money, but it says page, two, please. and that makes page one. It's it's the colored sheet. Lines 11, 12, and 13. Oh, it should have been, you're correct. It's, it should it's have been zero, zero and that's two. my fault. I and was that, the one who did this page. <laughs> right, no, I, and I, I want to say thank you for doing the it page be because I think it makes it yes. really, really clear mm -hmm. ah, and, right, and right, just right. so right. much easier to understand. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And that was just a little thing. Yeah, um, forgot the decimal point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, it just, for someone not looking at it, it looks like Is we're dropping fine? two teachers here and two teachers there. And it's anyway. point two. Yes. Um, so let me, can I cir circle back to the question that was raised before? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the budget subcommittee has been doing some outreach efforts and we had one at Thompson on February 9th. Our next one is going to be hosted at Audison's, Audison Middle School's OPEC meeting on the 26th. Um, at 8.30, any parent doesn't have to be middle school is welcome to come to that and we'll be discussing the budget and taking questions and stuff. Um, and then the other ones are to attend school committee meetings, to attend budget subcommittee meetings, to come to the public hearing that will be at our next meeting um, and or to contact us. And we've set up a um, email list, uh, email account that goes direct to the budget subcommittee and then we'll report out to the full school committee. It's ASC budget 2016 at gmail.com. Um, or you can just find one of us and, and ask. So. Just to add to that, if Mr. Hainer, uh, I've uh, enjoyed going to Stratton and Hardy and the other night Thompson to their PTO meetings uh, doing uh, school committee budget process. Well received. Uh, Part of the presentation, the PowerPoint, was a listing of uh, all the links that we had to the request from all the schools and stuff when they brought it in, mm -hmm. and again, uh, to the uh, email page, and uh, parents have asked for that, and it's, it's, again, send it to us, and we'll be happy to send it out to get the input back from them. Ms. Dunn, can you enlighten us again? Um, thank you. Um, Dr. Allison Ampey, the uh, resolution. Oh, can I ask a question about the budget first? Oh, I, oh please do, yeah. yeah. Um, so actually I have two questions, um, which is down from years before. First is, <laughs> um, where's the credit that we're getting from the town for solar? How is that reflected mm -hmm. in this budget? It isn't. Okay. <laughs> and when will it be? Or I mean, not, not necessarily will it be reflected in the budget, <clears throat> but when does it start? Hitting our books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it will begin to hit this year and hopefully will help defray some of the cost of the elevator. Okay. When the facilities budget migrates to the facilities department, it will go with it. So the school department is not going to realize the long-term benefits of the solar. So, but will our energy bills go with the yes. facilities yeah, too? No, the, so, yeah. Okay, so the whole thing. The whole thing's going. Okay, okay so we lose both. <laughs> okay, so, so that was question one. And then question two is looking at which section? Section eight, um, page eight and nine. Um, it's athletics, ice hockey. <coughs> and actually it's kind of two questions. One is there's two places where there were athletics listed and I didn't understand why. Um, actually on page five, it's listed at the bottom. This is in the high school total. There's transportation and stuff. Oh. And then it shows up again in page six and stuff. We split, we split athletics out from the high school at a certain point in the budget history. So some of the history resides okay, in those so earlier years. Okay, so it's because of history. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but then my question about the hockey, I'm asking about this because this was one of the things that you had listed as needing there's an uptick in the amount that we're funding for athletics and you said that it was ice hockey thing. But the girls ice hockey hasn't changed that much in terms of price. I did, not, I did not spend a lot of time 
carefully, I, I very carefully allocated all of the coaching expenditures sport mm -hmm. by sport, but I did not spend as much time carefully allocating the other expenditures sport by sport. Okay. I'm leaving that up in the hands of the athletic director. And what you see in here in both the projection, you know, basically I did the projections with her very minutely, mm -hmm. rolled that forward. But in certain sports, she's replacing uniforms and equipment so that, you know, baseball may be high in FY16, and I've projected it high in 17, but actually it's going to go to golf or something else. Right. So there's those kind of fluxes, not with the salaries, because we got those right yeah. on, mm -hmm. but with expenses, there's, okay, there's so, ambiguity. Okay, so the fact that the ice hockey is high for the boys and low for doesn't mean necessarily that that's what the time is doing. It could be they're no. just monies are in the wrong pot. Correct. Okay. Um, the expenditures, we work very hard to get to the right place, mm -hmm. but the revenues aren't always in the exactly the right place. They're in the right domain, in this case, athletics but they're not necessarily parsed out sport by sport, with the exception of the salaries or the, the coaching stipends. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mr. Thielman. Um, I, I actually had a question about grants, but just in, in terms of the hockey, is there, is, would that be a factor of the number of participants in the sport? Are there more? Uh, ice time is very expensive. Yeah, no, I know the ice time is more expensive, but are there more boys participating than girls? Yes. Okay, so that might be a factor in that, yeah, the number of students point. participating. I, I believe there are more levels. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's usually a factor in hockey. Okay, so my question, could you, I, 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 I went through this and I didn't, Cindy brought her book, so I'm using hers. Um, but, um, okay. yeah, I probably didn't need to admit that, but I did. <laughs> uh, 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 the grant difference from this year, to the, from last year to this year, could you just summarize that for Absolutely. maybe um, for me and for the public? I think people might want to know that. I have assumed no kindergarten grant because at the time we were putting the budget together, that was our best information. Yeah. It does appear that that may be incorrect, so we may get a bonus there that may, in fact, allow us to go and, and put in those full-time kindergarten TAs where now we have half-time kindergarten TAs. Yeah. Title I, we have assumed that our, our poverty level fluxes right on a junction and this year we benefited, I'm assuming we're not gonna benefit next year. Okay. So that could go either way. So that could potentially go up, but I feel it's always better to be conservative mm -hmm. and get a pleasant surprise than an ugly one. Okay. And so those are our two principal grant changes. Okay, so you, you, you made a conservative projection based on- Yes, I did. Okay, but we could get news- um, in, We could get better news. By, before July 1. Mm -hmm. On kindergarten we might get before July 1, correct? Correct. And but I'm typically, we don't get final grant numbers until sometime over the summer. Okay. So that's usually why in September I bring back a revised revenue projection to show you where the, you know, these are estimates on the grants yeah. to show you where they actually came in. Okay. So I just want to clarify. So if we were to get X number of dollars in grant money over the summer, that might trigger the hiring of more staff? It would depend on what the grant was and how it was specifically purposed. Yeah. You know, if we needed another... I don't know what. I mean, it would really depend. Title it does two. give us it does give us some flexibility. A little bit. Yeah. So it did this past summer yeah. when we got some title more Title One money. We right. hired some uh, literacy uh, tutors and uh, and math tutors at the Title One schools. So it's it's very restrictive in what we can do with it. Right. Title so, One. Yeah. So. The Title One is the kindergarten grant. Title Three that. is extremely restrictive yeah. as well. But the, but the kindergarten grant, doesn't that, does that free up other money in other parts of the district? No, it, they're very clear now that they wanted to supplement, not supplant. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, I mean, preliminarily, because we haven't seen their proposal about what they're putting forth for a grant, but it looks to us that taking our TAs from half-time to full-time would be supplemental. It wouldn't be supplanting. We're already providing the half-time TAs, and it's been a strong desire of the principals for a couple of years now. <coughs> Okay, so that and would probably be our first choice. Okay, the fee decreases. You, you said fees are going to be decreased. No, no, no. Okay, they're flat. They're fl fees are fees are flat. Fees so are you're, flat. you're projecting the same fees. Okay, yeah. that's it. Thank you, Dr. Seuss. Um, actually, I have one question about fees. Then on section three, mm -hmm. tuition in revolving says that we're only going to get ninety thousand. Yes, that was an adjustment we made this fiscal year mm -hmm. um, because. When the tuition in was initially developed, I in fact inherited their estimates when I got here, and they were estimating something <laughs> in the neighborhood of five hundred thousand dollars annually, mm -hmm. which proved to be extremely um, optimistic. Okay. Um, over time, we were collecting more money. We lowered the projection to something more reasonable. But a couple of years ago, the state stepped in and made it much more restrictive in how and when and why we could bill, and so that made it even less likely to collect money. 
So it took a couple of years to really shake it out and see what these new state restrictions were going to do. Sorry about that. So I mean, um, these are budget numbers, not actual. So about how much have we been getting? The 90 is much closer is to what much we're getting. closer to what we've been getting, even yeah. though we keep budgeting 190. No, we, I haven't. I or revised the projection for 16, and for I'm carrying year. the 90 forward. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I and I have a um, sort of um, off of Jeff's uh, point about that we're going to get sort of new news coming in the next few months. Um, there's some chance that we could get slightly more Chapter 70 money, and I know we're not talking about riches, mm -hmm. you know, but maybe a tiny amount <coughs> bumped up. And, um, and this year, according to Adam's budget, we get anything over 126,000, mm -hmm. that's assumed. Is there, can we sort of create sort of a, a list of the kinds of things we might fund if we got a small bump? And I, I mean, we're not talking about going too far down the list because it, it, we don't think there's gonna be a huge bump, but, but is there a way to, to sort of present to the public, you know, these are the kind of things we'd like to fund if we had an extra 100,000 or something. Well, I, I would answer that two ways. First of all, I attended the MASBO workshop where we had a number of people from the state talking about the Chapter 70, and I think the chances of getting extra Chapter 70 are like slim to none. So I don't think we have to spend a lot of time thinking about how we'll spend it, because I don't think we're gonna see it this year, and they were pretty clear about that. Um, the other piece of it is that the entire striped document is exactly what we would be spending the money on, depending on how much we got. So again, when we see if we were to get magic money, that's where we'd go first. No, of course. I was just wondering if we can sort of create a subset of it and say this More is sort of a no, prioritized list of here's well, what Without we knowing the money. Wow. You know, if we had $200,000, we may have these priorities. If we had $20,000, we'd have different priorities. Right. So to make a list without knowing the number, I mean, we want all of those things. Mm -hmm. So, I think that our first priority, honestly, would be reserve positions. Right, right, sure. And we really won't know, in some cases, till the summer or early fall. We've had to put in point twos here and there when the class size were too big and we couldn't do anything. So I think that's probably where the money would go. Uh, now, should we be fine in those areas, then I think we can go back and take, right. a, take a look and certainly welcome the opinions of the committee. And, and I even said to the administrative team, we would certainly want to have their input into it too. Mm -hmm. So it would be a sort of a collective decision. Yeah, actually one of, I mean, I noticed that the TAs, there were no reserve positions left, and so that was sort of a That's worrisome an, thing. That um, is a concern. In fact, I already know probably one where we probably should fund. So uh, yes, it's, it's going to go into the classroom in some form in, in way of staffing. I guess one of my priorities would be um, high school website design. <laughs> so I know it's been sort of batted about here and there. <laughs> uh, Dr. Allison Ampey, now the resolution. Okay. Um, so over the MASC listserv, it was brought to our attention that the Suburban Coalition, which is a statewide organization of local officials that advocates for resources, funding, and support at the state level, um, had put forth a resolution which they are encouraging local communities and um, school committees, selectmen, everyone into finance committees to pass and to communicate to their legislature about the foundation budget reviews recommendations. I'm not going to read the whole thing um, yeah, because read the therefore. The therefore, I'll read the therefore. Um, be it, it's lots of whereas is, and then be it therefore resolved that um, our school committee calls on the Massachusetts legislature and the governor of the Massachusetts to fully fund and adopt the recommendations of the Foundation Budget Review Commission in the immediate future. And it has rationale, which I'm also going to skip over. Um, but I felt that this would, it would be good to mm -hmm. add our name to this and send it on. Mm -hmm. And I would actually um, additionally move to authorize the chair to communicate to the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. um, and also the Finance Committee about this and mm -hmm. to suggest that they too would consider signing on and sending it on. Excellent. Uh, a second on the motion, Mr. Thielman. Any discussion on the motion to adopt the re Suburban Coalition Resolution? Well, I'm uh, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm happy to support this motion. I think it's a really important thing to get out to the public that 
Um, it's an untenable, unsustainable um, reaction for local municipalities like Arlington to have to deal with mm -hmm. what we're dealing with on a yearly basis, mm -hmm. where we clearly know what the numbers are to fund our schools and the vision that we have for our schools. Mm -hmm. And we're fighting with both hands tied behind our backs in terms of what we can do as a town uh, to, to levy uh, further tax dollars to fund that vision. So um, the burden is falling squarely on um, a, a regressive mm -hmm. type of tax. And um, it's, it's good for the, for the public to know that a study was finally accomplished mm -hmm. Um, telling the legislature what the state needs to do to help mm -hmm. our, our, our schools fund themselves. Um, and that's just what this resolution is, is saying that we want it to do. We want the legislature to pay attention to that um, foundation study and, and, and act on it. So I'm, I'm happy to support this. I'm glad that you brought this to our attention and the MASC listserv for, for also articulating this subject. Thank you. Just as a point of <clears throat> clarification, almost, is that the Foundation Budget Review Commission uh, documented that the foundation budget, which drives the funding formulas for Chapter 78, has been underinflated over many, many years, so that uh, the foundation budget has not kept pace with the cost of providing an adequate education. And back in 1993, when we went to ed reform and that funding formula, uh, the foundation budget was costed out to uh, get to the uh, cost of an adequate education. Um, so they made recommendations to go and work to catch up. And instead of catching up, the governor's budget has a negative 0.22% inflation rate. In, in essence, a deflation rate. And we all know, looking at these expenses, the things are not deflating, our costs are going up. Uh, our special ed costs are going up, our transportation costs are going up. Uh, everything we do uh, goes up. And it's totally unrealistic uh, of the governor to go and present a budget with a negative inflation rate. And that's why I wholeheartedly support this resolution and I thank Dr. Allison Ampey for bringing it before us. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting the, uh, oh. Oh, uh, oh. oh. No, I, I don't want to get into yeah. But I think it's also helpful for the public to know what this could mean to Arlington. Mm -hmm. um, if it was fully funded, and an, we'd have an annual increase in the range of 3.4 to 3.6 mm -hmm. million dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's a unanimous vote, thank you. Um, are we done with the budget? I assume so. We go to the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by a one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Warrant for approval, warrant number 16111. Dated 128.16, total warrant amount $540,360. Minutes for approval, regular draft minutes for approval, January 28, 2016. Motion by Mr. Pierce, second by uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The consent agenda is adopted consent. unanimously. We now go to the enrollment task force discussion. Um, Mr. Hainer asked for us to make, have some specific questions here, so I'm going to ask Mr. Hainer to start. I'll, I'll also def quickly defer to the facilities committee meeting that the, we had the other night. The, uh, hmm. My concern is that uh, we have, a, I would like to see an independent uh, analysis done uh, Dr. Bodie and other people have already done a lot of work on that. Um, I just want us going forward when we have our meeting, I think it's on the 23rd, mm -hmm. that, that we have a proposal from the school committee uh, with a definitive uh, approach going forward with this mm -hmm. and whatever it goes. And I defer to the, the regular facilities committee on this. I, I'd like to see an independent thing done mm -hmm. for, for, so that there's 
it's there. Uh, how much time it would take, I don't know. Uh, it's important. One of the other aspects in the documents that I saw tonight is about bringing this forward in timelines and stuff. I don't know if it's practical. If Gibbs is on the table, if, if that's the way we decide to go, or whatever we go, the possibility of phasing it in uh, over a multiple year period um, to, to stretch the costs out, to the impact, and things of that nature. I'd like that to be part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what you. Excuse me, what you saw on, on the green agenda today was uh, a proposal I brought to the facilities committee the other night. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll do that in the uh, rest in the facil <coughs> facilities uh, committee report. Um, so we'll go down to subcommittee liaison reports and announcements, policies and procedures. Uh, Mr. Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a meeting on February 1st. Um, we were going to review our meeting dates and times, and we did. We discussed that uh, at length. Um, we are supporting a, no action at this time on our meeting dates and times for a couple of reasons. Um, Dr. Bodie had mentioned to us that she had had conversations with both the high school and middle school principals about making sure, if at all possible, to any extent that school events, specifically theirs, uh, could be adjusted to our calendar. We have 20 dates a year. And it's much harder for, mm -hmm. for, for us to, to go to these events, particularly in the fall, mm -hmm. if we're here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and they expressed a willingness to, to do that. So, mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons, we think that this is a good time for us to meet. This is an early enough time for us to meet and get out of here and, and still get to bed. Um, and, and we like Thursday night meetings. So, no change uh, projected uh, or recommended to, mm -hmm. to the committee. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Oh, we also discussed the possibility that if there was a period of time where it just was impossible to avoid mm. significant events, we could, on sort of a one-time basis, shift our schedule without shifting it for mm -hmm. the entire time. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, always. Yes. We have flexibility on the 20 dates we choose right. Right. Uh, under right. our policy, but we do have to choose them uh, well, we before the end them. of the year. Well, we yeah. can move them. We, could, we, need we to can move, move them, them if we too. Need to. Yeah. 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 We, we have that right. Yeah. Uh, we, we also discussed on a, another topic uh, which we've been wrestling with the last couple of meetings uh, with regard to um, our files concerning um, what we were talking about tonight with principals and, mm -hmm. and, and knowing um, any addendums to their contracts and what their contracts are going to be mm -hmm. calling for. Uh, we have several policies on this type of subject of budget um, and approval and authority. So we're talking about consolidating them mm -hmm. um, into, into one document um, is, is something that we're going to be talking about and hopefully doing and presenting to you. Um, the other thing, we'll, we'll be meeting again on um, February 22nd at 8.15. Mm -hmm. Didn't we send it to council to get recommendations, the, the different policies? Uh, Rebecca get? Bryant, right, yeah. We, we have council uh, who are going to be, they're going to be looking at these policies um, and, and, and trying to update them mm -hmm. and specify them to our purpose. And that's something that is, mm -hmm. is to be done. I, I've been in contact with um, our town council um, about um, the electronic signatures on warrants. Mm -hmm. Just waiting to hear back from him mm -hmm. on that. Um, that's, that's all I can think of reporting, Mr. Hannon. <laughs> Bad, Mr. Pierce. Uh, Mr. Hayner. Uh, just go back on the, on the policies and thing. Uh, from my, I brought those forward, and from my perspective, it worked well tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy with the way it went tonight. Mm -hmm. So thank you. OK. Uh, anything else, Mr. Pierce? Nope. We now go down to budget. Dr. Al Snappy. You heard most of what we talked about. As said, Mr. Hayner has been doing wonderful job going out and talking to PTOs where when in if they were available and he was available and stuff um, we would have liked to have been to everyone's but that's not possible this mm -hmm. year and that's why we've asked other PTOs if they're willing to host mm -hmm. um, and the public hearing will be next ne at our next meeting but you can also come to our budget meetings uh, I think we'll probably have one in the next couple of weeks but it's not yet scheduled mm -hmm. Okay. Um, enrollment challenges. Nope. Facilities. 
Facilities. So facilities has mostly been dealing with, shockingly, <laughs> school enrollment task force issues. Um, we had a meeting on Tuesday this week, the 9th, um, and we mostly were discussing um, the document that you saw that I sent out, sorry for its lateness, um, given that we just met mm -hmm. on Tuesday and I, uh, I didn't have time to kind of make all the changes that we discussed mm -hmm. at the meeting until today. So. Um, if people want to pull that up. What I'm hoping for is, um, so we meet as the school enrollment task force on the 23rd of February, which is the Tuesday after break, so Tuesday after next week. Um, and what, I, what we want to try to do is show, you know, have a clear um, document that, you know, states here are the options, here are best of our abilities, um, and I put in here as a footnote um, that these are our estimates, um, but that obviously we need an architect and we need the money if we want mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. time and money estimates, obviously. Um, and just trying to lay it all out. So we decided that really the things that we wanted to get across to the uh, task force was what are the costs, and we broke those out in three ways. What are the building costs? What, how long do we need modulars for that option? And then what is the kind of incremental staff costs? Um, in so, and and we, we played around with this a little bit. Kathy did a great job trying to come up with like an actual dollar amount of, um, you know, we know that for X, amount of students we need y number of you know administrators teachers and staff if we stay in place at Audison mm -hmm. um, and so then what we tried to do was come up with okay but if we're not at Audison if we do go outside to the Gibbs or build another school or do something else there is some incremental additional staffing needed that we can't quite you know put a dollar amount on so what my my um, way of looking at it was well if if the number of staff that we need just for the enrollment was X say it's you know 10 new teachers and a new nurse and uh, you know a couple of guidance and whatever if you take them if you take part of the school out and put it somewhere else my estimate was okay then if you're gonna do that that incurs a 1.5 times increase in those 10 people, not in the total staff, obviously, but in the 10. So if it was 10 on site at Audison, then if it was at Gibbs, it would be that we would need 15 because you have mm -hmm. that many more. And they may not be five new people. It may be bits and pieces of FTEs that have to now be uh, housed at that school. Um, because when you move it, obviously you need, there's just more people that you need. So we've still kind of struggled with like how we want to, you know, explain that because you know, I think some. I think it, what's really important is just to note that there is an additional cost in having, in in choosing a decision that is not based at Audison. If we decide to not grow Audison in place, that part of that cost is that there is some additional staffing. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know what it is, but we can mm -hmm. we can assume that it's some amount, you know, more than that. So that's so we were trying to get that, and then also we added a column for kind of the longevity of the solution. Again, just to reflect that new construction tends to be the 50 plus years, and renovating Gibbs, which is already a really old building, is probably not going to have as much longevity. Um, so just so that kind of all of that was out in there. And then uh, the piece that uh, we hope Dr. Bodhi will uh, fill in um, before the meeting, obviously, is um, kind of what is the educational impact and viability of that mm -hmm. choice, um, just so that they can also get a read from what we're thinking of. We had, uh, when you saw it last, it had pros and cons mm -hmm. um, in that, but I think that the pros and cons, part of the problem with those is that it's totally based on your point of view. One person's pro is another person's con, and it's the same exact thing. So it started, and they started to get really long, and then there were, so we, we decided that kind of those weren't as useful in the document uh, for the school enrollment task force. So what I'm hoping tonight um, is that you guys have, I know you didn't have very long to look at it, but if there's anything else you think we should change or add before it kind of uh, before we fill it in and, and take it off to the school enrollment task force on the 23rd. Okay. So 
that's what I'm looking for. Questions, comments, Dr. Allison Ampey? Can you clarify when you have estimated costs, does that include the modulars that you're mentioning or are the modulars in addition to the building cost? Uh, what do you mean? Um, I don't have actual modular costs. Right. So those are just the years. Okay, so that's that when we need. Needs. So it, so those are the there years would be, we would need it. Right, so there'd be, in addition to the building costs, there's modular costs for the Each different. Each of those years, yep, for, exactly. For the different solution. Okay. Yep. Mr. Thielman. I think it would be good if we can, to Kiersey's point, to put in this um, estimated building costs, estimated modular acquisition mm -hmm. costs. So yeah, I think it should, so I think it should have a, because I think what we, and is there any way, I mean, you had on the chart the other night an estimate of the incremental cost if we were to use the Gibbs. You don't, you're not comfortable using that number? Uh, I think that I need to revise it a little bit. I think that after the discussion, I needed to change the administrative yeah. piece of it. But it's going to be, you know, that's b basically it that it would change at this point. Uh, you know, it's really hard to say what the incremental with respect to staff because until you actually schedule yeah. and actually move and decide what, which group is moving, it's really difficult. Well, you know, one thing that you might do, <clears throat> because I think, I think the group we're gonna be presenting to on the 23rd is gonna like to see some numbers. Yeah. And so what they might like is a range. I can, we can do a range, though I have to say our estimates when we first did this, um, when Diane was talking with Triumph, they, we got different numbers that turned up with the actual, we went out to bid. And that is one of the issues, too, is everybody would like to have very sure numbers. But the only time you really get sure numbers is once you've gone out to bid and the bids have come in. So no, I, okay, let me, let me clarify. I'm talking about the incremental cost, mm -hmm. and the incremental cost column, you might want to put a range. It could be from Even 500. Staff? Oh, yeah. I see, I see, no, for that staff. one. He's talking about staff. Incremental, staff. incremental, yeah, incremental cost could go, you know, 500, yeah, 500. So don't million. give an exact number. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And also, did, and then that incremental, do we, do we do, is there a utility number for the Gibbs? <laughs> good oh. point. No, we don't have a utility need, number. That's a good point. We should put that in. in there. Although there will be yeah. more <laughs> utilities if we build at the Odyssey right. as well. So I feel like that's a zero sum. Mm -hmm. Well, it may not be. Utilities are no longer going to be a concern of the school department. Oh, yeah, department. that's true. Okay. Right. Wow. All right. So let me just, um, so it's important that we know the modular cost range, and then we know, and we already have the numbers for, uh, Renovate Gibbs. We have the numbers for addition to the Addison Middle School. The other question that was raised that was raised by a, a parent um, that it, it was when when the parent spoke, it caused me to think about this. Is <clears throat> we're, are we clear on um, when an architect can come in and do a good analysis of the of the Addison? Well, that's something that we would have to hire somebody to do. Yeah. We, we have um, uh, asked the, the Lori Coles to do a timeline and also to lay out, as Ruthie Bennett did, what are the needs of the building at Gibbs. So we're very clear. The one thing that we're, I think we're on very solid ground on is what the renovation costs would be at Gibbs. At Gibbs. But I think it's also helpful when people see mm -hmm. what, it, what would it entail. And one of the reasons why I think it's helpful to see that is that it speaks not only to the cost, to justifying the cost, but secondly, to how long it's gonna take. It's not going to be a year project. It, that, that will be unreasonably short. In the Addison, we can't, we can't get that good of numbers for the Addison for the Tuesday. Well, the one of the, yes, that's the other thing I actually have asked Ms. Coles to do as well. Um, the, one of the thoughts on the addition was to have it be actually three stories. Right. And the first story be parking, because that is a huge problem up there. And then the second and third be the classroom. So that number that we have for new construction is based on only what it would be if we only had those two floors. I don't, it's not gonna be the same per square foot for a garage as it is, but I don't know what that number is. And so she's going to look at that next week and give me that number. Good. So we'll have a better number there. Um, now, having said this, the, there is a difference between what 
I've been told by uh, um, other architects, not just HMFH, what is the going per square foot and what MSBA uses. And, but the thing is, this is most likely not going to be an MSBA project, so I think we'd be wise when we think of the cost to see what the going rate is. But the figure we have now for the Addison is market rate. It's the market rate. Not MSBA rate. Not right. MSBA rate, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I mean, I, I, think what, I think what the task force is gonna want, um, and I think what the parents, yeah, the is, 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 yeah, the numbers is, is, is mm -hmm. as firm as possible. They're going to be asking for, and they have a right to ask for, estimates on modulars, best estimates we have right now, knowing that it could change, so that they, so that everyone can see the total, a total cost. So there's a column at the end of it with a total, total cost. A total cost. And, and, and the incrementals as best we can estimate. Because I think, I mm -hmm. think that's what the people want to, that's what people want to see right now. And then we'll see where the conversation goes. Right. I have right. a sense of where it's going to gravitate to based on the numbers. I have a sense of where that committee is going yeah. to go. But. One, of the, one of the issues with any incremental cost from going out to another building is that that is in perpetuity. Yeah. You're going to have those operating costs. Now, there are going to be increases in operating costs through all these years because our enrollment is growing. So, and that would be true if we just had an addition at Audison as well. That would be taken care of. So there are a number of issues that people do want to look at, but one of the issues, too, that's n not totally captured in this chart in numbers is that if you put an addition on Audison, um, you also have modulars on site. Yeah. And how you manage that is, 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 is going to be an issue. So I think that some thoughts even going into, well, how could we mitigate that during that period of time? So that some thought is going into that. And, uh, you know, another issue, too, is um, the capacity of those, uh, as Ms. Johnson pointed out, is what is the capacity of the town and the school department to manage multiple building projects simultaneously? That is not an, an unfair uh, thing to put into the calculus of all this, too. Yeah, but it has to be done. Hmm? We don't really have much we, of a choice. We don't though. have much choice. We can't <laughs> we, wait to fix the Audison. No, no, until no. I'm just saying we we done. do have a choice though in how we approach this. We don't have to do. We could concentrate our efforts in a fewer locations. You know, if we if we go with the eighth grade at the high school model, we're already doing the high school project. Mm -hmm. It will add to that, but it won't be a separate project to manage. We throw down modulars wherever we have to to keep Audison going and then we move the eighth grade out. That's a project, we'll get money from the MSBA. Take the Gibbs off the table completely. If we have to go to the Gibbs or we have to build at the Audison, that's another whole separate project. So we've got the Stratton, we've got the high school, which is gonna be a massive amount of work, mm. and we're probably gonna to have to do something at the Thompson too. Mm. So you know, we've got three for sure. We've got Stratton, high school, and Thompson. And then if you wanna add a fourth to that, at some point, people's heads will explode, I, I think. But we we, we, we did we did three simultaneously uh, in, in the late '90s on the elementary rebuilds. But the uh, high school project. High school's a huge project, but uh, yeah. what, what can we do, Mr. Hainer? Stratton will be done before we get mm -hmm. the Stratton construction will be done. Will be moved in within two years. Yeah. But the feasibility for the high school will be oh, going I understand on concurrently. That, but that's people. We're not okay, mm -hmm. but. We're not going to have three running simultaneously. That's all I'm saying. Mm, yeah. And, we'll, and we'll Dr. Dr. Body has specifically stated people. that we do not have any guarantees whatsoever if MSBA is going to give us uh, the eighth grade. That, yeah, no. So that we, we have to keep all these things are up in the air right now. So I'm not willing to make any firm judgments right, uh, based on this because things are still in flux on all this right now. Mm -hmm. Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, so I don't know how much the task force is going to look for this, but I think it's really even more important that we're bringing to it the educational impact and what are these different solutions going to mean for the children? How, are th how is it going to affect their, both their experience, their ability to learn, their social and emotional wellness, all of these things for all of these objects. And, and mm -hmm. partly because everyone's going to be looking at the money, I think it's even more important that we're coming back. And we haven't talked about it that much, which is 
why I'm bringing it up now. Just I really hope that you'll flesh that out I, and definitely so put it out to us maybe before you send it just so we can see so we know what mm -hmm. the talking points are. Um, but that's you know if there's been any research on if any of these al alternatives work better in other places or or um, just I think that's something we could use more information about. The intent is to get it out mm -hmm. to the facilities subcommittee, and I have no problem with giving it to the whole committee. Uh, I was ambitious thinking I was going to get it done tomorrow. Uh, there's so much going on, but it's certainly by early next week okay. um, at the very latest, because mm -hmm. I want you to have a chance to take a look at it. The meeting is about a week after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thielman. Thank you. So, I mean, that's the, the key. I mean, the committee is going to ask, what is the superintendent's opinion as to what is the best educational option for the children? Mm -hmm. yep. And whatever Dr. Bodie says is probably what they're going to gravitate to. So, I mean, I think Mm -hmm. So if it's if it's sixth grade at the Gibbs, then that'll be what's the be best educational option. If it's eighth grade at the high school, if it's expansion in the middle school. So I mean, I think it's this is the time to dialogue with the with the superintendent about this because I mean I think that's the message that they're they're looking for on the 23rd. What's the superintendent's educational recommendation? Mm -hmm. um, what's the cost? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what's the rec educational recommendation is part one. Part two is what the cost mm -hmm. is. So. Mm -hmm. Kathy's got to speak to that. And as far, you know, Diane, I think the one thing I just want to say is I think we're going to have, have to have multiple projects going at once. We're going to have yeah. a feasibility yeah. study at the high school. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to be having, doing something with the, with the middle school. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's going to be, mm -hmm. what the committee is going to vote, what we're going to adopt. But it, we're going to have a middle school construction project going, a feasibility study at the high school, and then, you know, whatever the wrap up of the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. finishing product, finishing everything at the Stratton. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no question that there's yeah. going to be multiple projects, yeah. but how many multiple projects mm -hmm. and of what complexity? And, and that was one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, even throwing down modulars is hard work. Yep. You know, there's yep. a lot of management to that. There's a lot of planning. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into that. I was trying to think about it, you know, because the numbers that we got back on the Stratton modulars were so distressing, mm -hmm. so out of sync with very reputable quotes mm -hmm. that we had, got, well, not quotes, but estimates we had gotten from, you know, trustworthy vendors. It was so out of step. And with so many other districts locally also in the same situation, the competition for modular classrooms is really high, and they're going to they're gonna make full play of capitalism on us. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes me very worried about trying to do these cost analysis on numbers that feel extremely soft. And, and the other thing, too, that I was trying to think about is, you know, and, and only in my little teeny tiny piece of education, which is trying to get the best educational environment with the resources we have. I, I can't speak to curriculum or those more important things. But where are we going to get the best classroom for our kids to sit in with the money we've got? Well, the, so we're going to probably be going out to the voters for a debt exclusion vote. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need a range. Um, and that's why um, we need to be saying that we're going to get, we're going to, you know, use your dollars as wisely as we possibly can for the edu for the education of our kids. But I think we're at a point in the next several months we're going to be asking for a mm -hmm. debt exclusion mm -hmm. for the middle school expansion and and the Thompson or hope, hopefully a Thompson expansion. So I think we're going to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And and um, so I think mm -hmm. we just have to accept that that's what we're about to engage in, mm -hmm. about to embark upon. Dr. Seuss. Oh, um, so as a former academic, I know more than anybody that there's conflicting literature out there. People keep mm -hmm. quoting, oh, the literature says this, the literature says this. Um, but it might be valuable if you know of any sort of survey of literature to sort of send that around. Even if it's at a higher level than we can really understand, we can sort of skim it. Um, it just might help sort of people on the task force and us sort of talk more intelligently about these educational goals and minefields and so forth with the different options. Mr. Hainer. I agree with Mr. Thielman. We, should, we need to have this discussion on the educational part, but it's a chicken and egg thing. Mm -hmm. Money's driving just about everything we decide to do. Uh, we want education, the best education. It's going to cost a lot of money. That's a fact. We need to have a parity for whatever's going to resolve the issues at, at Audison. We need parity, not the Cadillac. And we, have, we need to keep that in our minds on that. Um, 
I find it very hard to make a decision on educational factors if Gibbs is in play, but Gibbs is going to cost three times as much as what modulars or an addition at Audison is going to cost. If I had my choice, I'd separate the buildings because the idea of having a 1,400 student school is, bothers me very much to try to manage and, and maintain and stuff. Uh, if nothing else, just a, uh, if you had to evacuate a building of that size in, in constricting the space. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if it's going to cost three times as much to bring Gibbs up to online, I couldn't support that. Mm -hmm. So with all my rhetoric, it, we need to have a, a good feel for the cost. We only have this meeting to, to make a decision. We're really bound. Yeah. I don't know how to resolve it. I, I mean, the, the education part, we, we produce a wonderful education product in this district. I don't know how we do it with the, the limits we have on our money, but we do it to the faculty, the administration, to their credit. Um, we need solid numbers or as close to solid numbers as we can to make these decisions from my perspective. Okay. Uh, District Accountability Curriculum Instruction Assessment, Mr. Thielman. Okay. We are on the second reading of the uh, evaluation process and procedures. Dr. Seuss sent me some comments. Um, so just to clarify, uh, in the timeline per policy CBI by March 31st, 2016, uh, that assumes that if we haven't, there's no park scores or um, we don't have any data. The superintendent will just say data not available mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, data, that's whatever, not, not completed or not available. Um, Dr. Seuss pointed out the community relations subcommittee uh, has no plans to present another survey because there's so many other things going on. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's just something to be noted. So, I mean, it says if conducted by the community relations subcommittee. And then the final thing uh, Dr. Seuss pointed out in her email was um, in goal 3.1, and I, I agree with this, and I, so I can accept this. Um, Dr. Seuss says that goal 3.1 should be sharpened. We need a plan, but we also need a comprehensive analysis. So she's asking that uh, instead of a plan to respond to the report, a comprehensive analysis of our options, financial analysis, educational analysis, et cetera. So Kathy, I didn't even talk to you about that, but that, <clears throat> is that, so it's, I think I'd need to understand a little bit more what you're asking. Like a financial an analysis of what? Well, you kind of have it in this whole. Yeah, in, the, um, but in the budget. Mm -hmm. No, 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 talking about for, 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 for the, the so, so I'm sorry. So goal 3.1 is develop a plan to address space needs related to anticipated enrollment growth over the next 10 years. Um, oh, oh, okay. And so an, an evidence that you've done that um, instead of a plan to respond to the report. I think it's just special, it's just taking, it's more than the plan, it's just, it's the educational, and it's basically the chart we have here. It's the chart. Yeah, okay, so we, right. that wording's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the wording's yeah. fine. Yeah. Did anyone else have any suggestions? No. I don't think the subcommittee needs to meet again. I think we got a plan. Mm -hmm. And I'll just edit, I'll take these edits. Good, just to. Mr. Heener. <laughs> just, thank you, I'm sorry. Just to reiterate, uh, one of the policies in the, in the discussion was that there in March, the superintendent's going to give us an annual, uh, an update, uh, a mid-evaluation update on what's going on. Right. Yeah, so I just, I, I just wanted yeah. to mention that, mm -hmm. so to schedule it for one, uh, on the agenda for one of our meetings in March, that's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. That's right. Okay. Thank um, you. Community relations, Dr. Seuss. So we have not met, well we did, we, so we met for 10 minutes today. We have mm -hmm. not done a full-fledged meeting. Um, and the purpose we met for 10 minutes uh, for is that at our last community relations uh, meeting, um, the superintendent sort of tasked myself and um, Ms. Hansen, um, AA representative, um, to come up with a survey for parents and teachers uh, to ask about calendar changes. Mm -hmm. And this would be t changes not for the next year. We recognize that we need lots of time to sort of under, if there's going to be a change, we need tons of time to know that this change is coming. Uh, but, but to do the survey this year for a change for, is it 2017 and 18? And so it came up with a version that I'd like to present for first read, and this is in the Novus um, mm -hmm. attachments backup material. And so I'd like to get people's thoughts on it. 
if, if the chair so desires. Well, it's it's um, it's okay. Um, <laughs> it's brand new to us. It's so brand new yeah. to us, right? Yes. Uh, Ms. Starks. Um, being on the subcommittee, I saw it before uh, the full committee, um, and I think it's great. I think it's well worded. I think it, that it really gets to the heart of the questions that we want. The only feedback I gave uh, was that I would like to make sure that parents understand that um, we are not tying ourselves to doing anything no matter what the outcome of the survey is, that the survey is just kind of a dipstick to try to understand what people think about these items because um, we need their input. And so, um, But otherwise, I thought that they were well worded. I thought that you know you kind of, um, even in the um, having to deal with the uh, difficult discussion of uh, religion and religious holidays, that I felt like even that question was uh, well done, um, didn't really take a side or, um, but I just, I thought it was good. Mr. Thielman. So I had one suggestion in the, uh, opening paragraph instead of the survey will be given out to educators and parents of February 2016. Oh yeah, we have to change oh, no, 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 it wasn't the date actually. Yeah. Okay. And could result in change of the school calendar. Mm -hmm. I would say and will inform mm -hmm. discussions mm -hmm. about the 2017-2018 yeah, yeah. school calendar. Okay, that's it's a gonna great idea. inform the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I mean, I, you know, no, it's a function of a contract yep. and lots of other yep. things. So will inform discussions. Yep. <clears throat> Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I had a few comments. Um, on question four, I think the way the question is worded um, makes it difficult if someone supports not holding school on one, but not all three days. It, it's right, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. They're what? either all in or they're all out. It doesn't right but i think any religion or religion no you're talking about question the pre-labor day start day is that what you know four no is four is is no, the yeah. question yes but let me finish then it says please indicate your level of support for holding school on all three of the following religious holidays right. yep. and so if if you're not all in mm -hmm. for whatever reason i think how you answer that, I have no idea how I would answer that. And, and I think the data that you're going to get from that is questionable. Dr. Seuss. Oh, I just I hope you guys are fine. So originally we had separated out and we thought that that was um, treading on sort of, it, it just felt like we were worried about causing offense by separating them out. And we thought that we were potentially getting at um, people's preferences for individual holidays with the second set of questions or the second one because teachers and parents are going to get different ones um, because we do want to see is there a significant group of people who would take this holiday off or who would um, have their children stay home from school right I'm, I'm just saying I think question four that you have the chance of getting there is no answer that you can't check a box that conveys what you think what you can't say, think. I just want to get rid of one of the holidays and not the other. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there's not an, an you know, I, I can't answer that question with the answer, you know, one through five doesn't give me an answer that indicates my ans indicates my feelings about that. The way it, the way it's worded right now. Because you want to separate out the holidays, I'm, I'm, or, 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 or no, maybe yeah, mis yeah, misunderstanding. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, it just I right. don't think so. I personally don't like that question. I understand why you did it that way, and I understand that there's the other one below that. But I'm just saying yeah. that question to me doesn't do things. Um, the second thing is. Why not just send different surveys to teachers and parents instead oh. of having parents only or teachers only? We, we, we are. Okay. We, yeah, we are. Okay, sorry, so yeah. that's not. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, yeah. The, okay. the number Survey is monkey can layer it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah, yeah. That, that's. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Like. This is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We are going to do that. Um, yeah, and then I would hope that we're going to ask some demographic questions so we know who's answering the survey. Oh, good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't think um, that. You know how many kids do they have? What yep. eight, what levels Elementary. are they at? Mm -hmm. Are they teachers or not, or, or whatever? Yeah, great. Um, I didn't think of that. And um, let me see; those were. And finally, I'm just wondering about the question three. I'm not.
positive everyone's going to follow mm -hmm. it as written. I'm wondering if it's like Monday before Labor Day, Tuesday before, or, or mm -hmm. dates or something that I'm, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm not sure people will understand what you're asking. Yeah, I mean, what, what date, you know, what days you're actually talking about there. Right. Um, yeah, this was a tricky one. I mean, we thought the chart was easier than, than wording, but, but we could say Monday before Labor Day, for example, in that chart. Yeah, yeah okay. that there, or something. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Thielman. So on question four, I'm wondering if you could just say, please indicate your level of support for holding school on religious holidays. Yeah. One indicates, so you don't, so you've already mentioned three to give people the context. We don't hold school on these three religious holidays. Uh, please indicate your level of support for holding school on religious holidays, period. So they got the context. One, two, one, three, five. And then re leave room there for comment. So oh, yeah, we could do that. People wanted to make a comment. Yep, yep. So yeah, that's an idea. That's not bad. People can make a comment. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's better. <clears throat> because, I mean, I think they may, you may find that people who celebrate other religious holidays that aren't recognized yeah. want to articulate their position. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Great. Yeah. Any other comments? I want to say there was, there was, um, Mr. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Um, there was something done within the last couple of years, and I, it might have been just to the teachers regarding the holidays. Just to the teachers. Was, oh, no, to the no, Labor Day issue, heard, right? No, there was a survey. Oh, there was? Quite, well, several years ago. Yep. Right. Yeah. Actually, Ms. Foley probably can remember. Yeah, I just can't remember if it was also parents. I know we got one as I teachers. <clears throat> We've done it twice now. Oh. So I'm uh, on, on that question, Mr. Chair. I, I'm just wondering about the um, the essence of sort of survey survey overload on terms of the same question being asked every couple of years, mm -hmm. and wondering about the the benefit of that. I uh, the, the, that's, that's an good. interesting point. Uh, the chair. Uh, in conversations with the superintendent and with people attending the uh, uh, subcommittee meeting prior to this meeting expressed his concern about going into the religious holidays uh, question at all and uh, stated that if uh, this were before us for a vote tonight, I'd probably vote against the survey for that reason. I, I really don't want to go there. It's been something that we've dealt with repeatedly over and over since I've been on this board in 2001, I think that we've landed where we should be on that, and I don't want to even make the, uh, the presumption that this could be on the table. I think that it's where we belong. Um, Mr. Heiner. The survey was done uh, just prior to uh, us adding the other two uh, holidays. The Jewish holidays. That's what we, we mm -hmm. sent out oh, the, that's why. That, when that survey yeah. came up. Right. Um, the um, forgot what I, the other one. So, thank you, um, Dr. Seuss. Oh, I, I guess I don't remember as a parent less you know involved in school community or getting a survey. So I don't. I, okay, no. I've got the results. <laughs> okay, <Huh>. great. <laughs> uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. School um, calendar survey. Yeah, school calendar survey. It was done for the 2013-14 school year. It was done. It, the reports were reported to us in 12, 12, 12, <laughs> um, and it was done for parents and I think also okay. for teachers. But the one that I have here is the parent one. And, okay, and I, I know we yeah, had well, teachers so also. Remember, so yes, it was done. Okay, and at that point there we talked about Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Christmas Eve and Good Friday mm -hmm. and there were um, significant respondents on all of these days that would not have their children go to school um, like around oh, a yeah. so sixth just, or more yeah so it just asked the question if school was held on this day, right which is would essentially you our other child? question of mm -hmm. afterwards yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so right. Uh, Dr. Oh, well, I just wanted to defend our thinking about including it, and I, I guess I wasn't aware of the history of, of the questions. Um, when I talk to people, when everyone's frustrated that school's going so late, um, one of the things that's sort of mentioned to me is, why don't we think about getting rid of the holidays? And, and with the understanding that, of course, if you celebrate that holiday and need to take it off, that you know, as of many holidays, right, that, that of course that that would be an option. Um, 
so I thought it was, that's why I thought it was valuable to include it, because it's something that comes up in people's minds. So it would be. You can refer back and say, we just asked this question. Well, yes, I, I, I actually, I didn't know that. So I, yeah, I'll yeah. look at those now results. Now that we have the data. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now maybe we should, maybe then that's four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. To take it. To okay. take off. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Janelle, you you can kill, still keep four as, What's your, what's your level of support for holding school on religious holidays and just see if there's any change in the... We could, I mean, there's a huge amount of people who have come into town in the last few years, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. could be a different. Okay, thing. okay, guys. Just, if, if I may, uh, just, Mr. please. Mr. Hainer. I think we have to be very, very careful asking any question using the word religion. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are a public, we are, a st uh, we're supposed to be divorced from that. Okay. Well, uh, discussion, it's gonna happen. It's going to happen. Well, all I'm saying is we should limit our discussion on this because it's a no-win situation for us. My, my stock response in this, you want to get out earlier, we start earlier. Uh, you know, uh, let's not monkey around in the middle. If you want to get out earlier in June, start before Labor Day, period. Let's, let's, let's figure that one out. Let's figure out if Tuesday's a bad day for... Uh, Good luck for the uh, open enrollment. Let's see if we can move the school starting time back to 8.30 at the high school. Do that, get rid of the, the stuff in the middle. I, 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 would, I, would, I, I will tell you, I will not support a change in the two vacations. I will not support a change in, uh, in, in the holidays at this point. I, I, I just think it's a non-starter and I don't even want to go there asking questions like it's a possibility. Um, any other questions or comments on this? Ms. Foley, do you have any? Yeah, because you, you guys are partners in this, and if anybody is Jump gonna in. be impacted by this, it's the teachers. Well, you know, I, I gotta say, I mean, I, there's so many parts of this that are uh, a little frustrating as a teacher. Uh, over my years, I'm on my 17th year now here in Arlington, and um, I've seen more and more parents pulling their kids out of my classroom for vacations. Mm. I mean, this year has been insane. Mm. Uh, at the end of the year? Mm. Just during the year. Oh, during the year. Not, not on February vacation, but, um, you know, with, I had a boy leave to go to Pakistan for a month. Mm. He came back and, you know, he's still struggling. Um, I had another boy just leave to go to Puerto Rico for a week. I had a little girl go to Peru for a week. I've had, I mean, I, I'm having people pulling their kids out all mm. the time. And... Yes, I will say by June, we are fatigued. Mm. And again, I have people mm. trying to end the school year early in June as well and pulling their kids out um, to send them to camps, to take them on vacation, um, to go to all these different things. So I don't know. I guess in some ways what I'm saying is that this, this survey is, is a good thing. I just think that you're also getting into a much, much, much bigger discussion about year-round schools and, and things mm -hmm. along those lines as well. It's a, it's a huge... Mm -hmm. It's a huge issue. I, it, as an educator with boots on the ground, I'm just telling you that this is, this is what I'm seeing mm -hmm. parents doing mm -hmm. um, all the time now. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I don't know how to stop it. And I try to give them, you know, try to explain to them what, what, what that means for their child. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess you can say, yes, by, by June, people are pretty, pretty fatigued, mm -hmm. kids, students, mm -hmm. starting earlier in the school year, mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, might be a better thing, but then does that mean that then we're all fatigued by the beginning of June instead <laughs> of the end of June, and people will start pulling their kids out earlier then as well? So, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. I, know, I work in a district that starts before Labor Day, and it seems that uh, uh, the June issue is a lot less, even, even just with a three-day head start, uh, and, and it gets us out of that perpetual snow day worry too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, have we calendar and surveyed out right now? Yep. Do we have anything? Let's see. Um, executive session minute review subcommittee, Mr. Hayner. Ms. Fitzgerald and I are working on it. The goal is to have it done by the end of March uh, for your approval. Or if, if it comes into April, you can deal with Dr. Seuss. <laughs> um, yeah, I will do it after we get through the warrant committee everybody get paid and the school enro enrollment task force is yeah I just want to add one thing i would like to uh i think i don't know if i mentioned it or not i did the polo plunge we had a high school teacher join us this year mr flanders and i wanted to commend him uh and uh 
He tried to he tried to get some high school kids. Uh, three signed up. They didn't come. They were the smart ones. But uh, uh, we all went in, and uh, wind chill was 15 degrees. Wow. Oh, glad you got a cold day. This I was worried about that warm winter. Um, Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I, I'd like to announce uh, my intention to apply for the chairship next year, and um, and of course it's going to be subject to a vote, and so see if you guys vote me. Um, but if that happens, I'd also like to start um, requesting uh, your thoughts about what committees you want to be on and, and other such things fairly soon. And so you're going to send us. And I will send you, I will actually um, borrow Paul's excellent uh, spreadsheet that he did last time and uh, maybe tweak it, but, but pretty looked pretty good. So, um, and send that out soon. Great. Okay. Um, any announcements or anything else from any of the members? Do we have any need for additional executive session? Seeing none. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, good timing. Yeah. yeah, well, Ms. Scheffler didn't show up, so we had a 15 yeah. minute advantage. Um, <laughs> a motion to adjourn by Mr. Thielman, enthusiastically seconded by Mr. <laughs> Pierce. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you.